What's up, everybody? How's it going? It's Sunday night, and we're at Bath City, which means it must be time to wind down your weekend. I am your host, Shannon, aka Small Press Shan, here with my awesome, incredible co host, Wednesday Phil. What's up, Phil? Awesome, incredible. I feel like I could have kept yes. going. There's more. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually doing really well. Awesome. Uh, this was a good week. I got to see the Texas Rangers play for the second time this month. Uh, and they won? They did. On a, on a walk-off home run. Uh, it was wonderful. I have learned that uh, indoor baseball games are like the greatest experience ever. Because it's not hot. It's not. So when we got to the game, the announcer was like, oh, it's uh, 94 degrees outside, but in here it's a cool 72. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I want all of my experiences to be like this from now on. So I may now be a Texas Rangers fan. Just for the indoor stadium? Just for the indoor stadium. <laughs> so any teams that have indoor stadiums will most likely be teams that I want to see uh, play a bunch of times. But uh, it was really great. Uh, I enjoyed it, and uh, I also entered the online dating world this week. So oh, that's exciting. Uh, Maybe. It's terrible. No? <laughs> it's <Okay>. terrible. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. I just, um, like, the first girl that I matched with sent me just an emoji to start the conversation. Oh. And so I actually had to ask my younger coworker, like, hey, what does this emoji mean? <laughs> Um, and do I have to respond with just an emoji or am I allowed to say words? Like I, was so, <laughs> I wouldn't know the answer. To yeah, I was so confused. Uh, yeah. But they knew exactly. They had pretty much just handed them the phone and they... They had the conversation Yeah, they just you. took it away because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's good. I did see uh, that M Matt sent me a fantastic meme about online dating this week. Let's see if I... Uh, Mail birth control is free. It's called holding a fish in your profile picture. So uh, <laughs> if you need some advice on how to not... Uh... <laughs> you know what? I will say there's a lot. So I'm, I'm only doing Tinder uh, because that was something that I was kind of familiar with the first time around. Um and anytime there's always those like red flags or the first photo, it's like someone shooting a gun. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. just pass, you know, any political related thing. I'm just like, I don't know what's getting you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anytime. And the fish one's funny because anybody that's like a ghost fishing, that's usually like all they want to do. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's funny because it's like, oh, you're going to, you're only going to want to go fishing and you're not going to want to go on any of the like dates or whatever so uh and and it was it was funny because nigel's profile used to have a fish in it so oh did it yeah, oh so, my gosh sorry nigel throwing you under the bus there but we've already had that conversation i think live on this show before yeah, so um uh, with him so but um well that's exciting good luck to you thank you hopefully thank you. you can find somebody who will talk about all these comics with you that's going to be tough. Uh, that's the dream, right? That's going to be tough. I, I don't know. I say that's the dream. That's my reality. So I don't yeah, know. I'm no. a, who, who knows? But they do exist. <laughs> I found someone who would talk about all the comics with me. So they apparently there are people who right. can do it. It'll be great. Uh, you know, just bring them here for your first or second date. I don't know if that's a good <laughs> idea. You know, uh, I'm a different type of person when I'm in the comic book <laughs> store. <laughs> Yeah. They they gotta get to know the real you. If they don't deserve you, if they don't love you at your Wednesday fill, they don't deserve you at your all the other days <laughs> oh, of the week no. fill. So I guess that's true. That's yeah. fair. Chad says, Hi, my name is Phil. Have you read Chicken Devil yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good test. It's funny Chad. you say that. Uh, I'm going on a date Wednesday and I have a uh, gift wrapped issue one of Chicken Devil. I'm like, hey, just everything you need to know about me is in the pages of this book here. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll find uh, some other comics that you can recommend uh, <laughs> this week. But Chicken Devil is definitely a great one. Uh, we are winding down our weekend as usual, and we've got this bottle of Columbia wine. It is a Cab Sav. It is not from Columbia, like Columbia, the country. Correct. This is from the Columbia Valley mm -hmm. of Washington State. So it was a bunch of people who were friends decided they needed to make some wine from this perfect area in in Washington to make wine from. So um, I haven't tasted this ever, so we'll see. It's rich and full-bodied. Ripe dark fruit, blackberry yeah. and black currant. <laughs> and, and it toasted has... Toasted oak and yes, cocoa. To toasted oak. 
And yeah, I was like, oh, this sounds like a matte wine, which is actually the person who picked it. So uh, this is best alongside hearty stews, roasts, or wild game meats. Um, <laughs> perfect. All things that I eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you don't eat stew. I feel like I soup would be like vegetable soup would be a thing that you could well, enjoy. Stews are the ones that are super hearty. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> soups are a lot less, you know, a lot more watery. Yeah. Um, I'm probably more of a soups than a stew type of person. That's fair. I like all things soupy slash stewy. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I could just like live off of even chili and be a happy person. It's tough though in Texas because it's hot all the time. It is. Soup is. I love soup like potato soup, mm -hmm. like broccoli cheddar soup. Oh, like broccoli cheddar soup. Especially like gourmands oh. with the the bread bowl. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If you want to make me the happiest person, you just bring me a bread bowl of broccoli cheddar soup from Gourmands and I'm going to like be like, here, thank you. Like, here's like a hug or a free comic. I don't know. Something. <laughs> something if you exciting. want free comics, just bring Shannon Gourmands. Or just like food in general that I think is delicious. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. We got some good wine. Um, it's it's pretty good. Uh, my cup smells like uh, it's been sitting on the counter for a week. Uh, so it's not. I keep going like that, but it's not the wine that has. Oh. The, it's <laughs> it's because my cup like needs to be cleaned out. Uh, Chad says he has a chicken and a gnocchi soup recipe. Okay, Chad. Well, bring me some gnocchi and uh, let's talk, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And since we're talking, we'll talk about some comics that you want to check out uh, this week. There was, there's a lot of new uh, number twos. It was mm -hmm. not a lot of number ones, but there were a lot of number twos. So we're in the heart of some series, which makes sense because they usually like to launch some series right before like the month of Free Comic right. Day um, or right around Free Comic Day. So it's not surprising we'd end up in some number twos. But before we get that, I literally am going to leave the number twos for the last of the hot new titles. I want to start with uh, some books that are pretty far into their story that we still need to talk about. So, um, up first on is From Vault. This is issue eight of The Blue Flame. And I really needed to bring this because it has been a long time since The Blue Flame has come out. Yeah, I was we, about to say, it's been a minute since I've seen an issue. Yes, we had a massive, like, it's been all over the place on the release schedule for The Blue Flame, which is such a sh shame because it's a really good book. Um, when this first started with Vault, they were like, this is kind of like the Vault universe version of The Watchmen, um, because it was going to be about a team of heroes who aren't necessarily, the, like, they're not good people, and in the very first issue, all of that team dies, except for one person, the Blue Flame, and he, we are seeing that kind of like Dr. Manhattan-esque storytelling where we don't really know necessarily like what is happening in this time versus what's happening in like another time and where he is in reality. Because the blue flame was selected by an alien council essentially to speak on behalf of humanity. And he... So like Green Lantern? Kind of like the Green Lantern. But he has to prove to this council that humans don't deserve to be destroyed. Uh, but the thing is, is that he's like a character like from Watchmen. So he's an alcoholic and a drug addict and he like is homeless and lives on his like sometimes lives on his sister's couch if she can let him stay there. If he's like got his stuff together enough for that. So he's not a good person. And yet he has to prove that humanity deserves it. And they're like, well, you're a hero and even you aren't a good person. So what's to say that anybody in the human race is good? And we get this duality story because we're seeing him as the person that we know you know the human who's not good at life and who kind of messes up everything and at the same time we're seeing him as the blue flame defending us to this alien race of people who want to destroy earth and so it's a really cool parallel of the story but on top of that it's it's interesting to see how he does defend humanity. And uh, a couple issues back, he was like, no, the thing that makes humans great is the fact that they are terrible. Like, we're not ever going to get it right, but right. we're still trying. And it's like, no matter how many times we mess up, we keep trying, we keep trying. And uh, this, it's, it's a really beautiful story. And now we've come back to this and he's continuing to mess it up in his daily life, but he is trying to prove something to this court uh, about humans as the blue flame and it's it's been an absolute great story it's uh, christopher cantwell who 
uh, has been doing some really awesome, like, deep dive stories recently. Right. Um, it's a shame that this release schedule has been, like, just making people forget that it exists. But come check it out. It's fantastic. It's kind of like the way Bliss was from Image, where it was all, like, just trying to prove something. And you saw right. the background story at the same time. So it was a little heavy of a read. But was an excellent story. This kind of falls in that same category. It's kind of a heavy read, but it's so good every time. Do you feel like this is going to hit 10 and be done? I think so. Okay. He kind of went on this, like, one, like, everything's kind of ramped up. He's at this, like, he's got this one last shred of evidence that he has to find to prove it. And that humans deserve to be saved. And, like, also shit's kind of hitting the fan, like, in his regular life. So it's like we've kind of hit that peak of the arc. So okay, I feel like we'll probably be 10, 10 at most 12. We haven't had a trade i don't think though so it makes yeah, me wonder if it is just gonna end at 10 so that they'll just put it all in one collection because walt does like to do that right uh i am gonna say this i think christopher cantwell is a name that people should just kind of put on their radar yes you know like eventually the rest of the world discovered you know like james tinian and ram mm-hmm. v i think christopher cantwell could be in that next line of like Maybe two, three years from now, we're seeing like Eisner nominations yes. and wins for best writer. Uh, so yeah, I definitely check it out. I, I think he's going to be one of those people we need to pay close attention to. Absolutely. Um, up next is Life Zero. This is issue four, and it's from a Blaze Comics. And this is this is your run of the mill zombie video game <laughs> turned yeah. comic book uh, with Chichetto on art though, which is you know your daredevil right. uh, artist. This is it's a fantastic like just no pun intended mindless experience into the <laughs> zombie world. Uh, in that we did see, and we are seeing you know the military people who you've got this captain who's going in who gets saved by his team. Like, his team comes in to save him out of this prison, and they break out, and now they have to make it through the town, and they're trying to save his daughter, and then uh, everything that could go wrong in zombie apocalypse along the way, and you're just seeing, like, members of the team, like, tick off, like, left and right as, like, the zombie apocalypse continues. And you always, you get all those classic twists and turns. I mean, if you're a fan of Resident Evil, uh, this book was made for you because it's like watching a Resident Evil movie or even playing the game. It feels like the big games that you play, like when you go to a place like Pinballs or uh, Dave & Buster's right. where you play those like cinema scope style uh, zombie games, it feels like those uh, just in the way that Chichetto does the art. But it's a lot of fun. And if you're a fan of zombies and you're not reading it, you should pick it up because it's a super fun zombie story. And it has all the great little twists and turns that you're like, oh, I know where this is going, but I'm still (laughs) completely can't. Like, you still yell when you get there. Like, you know where it's going. You know exactly what's going to happen. You could probably even predict the dialogue they're going to use. And then they say it and you're like, what? Every time. (laughs) I I would actually like to see this. I know now the thing is turning comics into tv shows or movies but i would actually be cool if they did like a like a telltale style video game right and i mean we've done that before we've seen you know the witcher be a video game we've seen Mm -hmm. walking dead be a video game and we've seen walking dead telltale games we saw fables turned into a telltale Mm -hmm. game um so you know it could happen Uh, except for the fact that i don't think telltale exists anymore (laughs) Oh, they don't? They, I, I thought they went. I thought they went under. They might not have, but I, I think there I was. I just a... saw they announced a new oh, one. Good. I thought they did, but then I also thought that they closed down. Maybe they got bought by somebody. That might that have been what it was. Anyway, uh, Slumber oh. Issue Three from Image Comics. This is uh, one of the books that you always teeter on where to put it on picks of the week or regular books. So, what are you thinking, Phil? <laughs> it. I mean, I, I. In all honesty, I feel like this book can't get any better. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is kind of the story of, um, a girl who is basically like a dream detective. Uh, she goes around and she protects people from their nightmares. Um, it kind of is very much like I Hate Fairyland, um, with the way that it's set up and the art style and everything, kind of having this like fantastical world, um, where dreams exist. And we discover that there is a shadow, she's like a shadow nightmare, um, who is well known in the dream world. Uh, She's the big bad. 
and this main character uh, is basically like I'm a, I need to take her down and it is it's just wonderful she has her little team uh, her sidekick that goes into the dream world with her she's kind of like that um, reluctant hero in a way where you know mm -hmm. maybe a little jaded from the world um, but it's really great because in this issue uh, her and this cop that she's teaming up with are going to go into his dream world to find um, to find this shadow nightmare uh, I think it's Valeric or Valeric yes. or Valeric one of those <laughs> 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 Obviously, this is a pumpkin pick of the week, and yes. she's she's over there yelling about it. Yeah, it's totally understandable. Um, but it's great because this uh, this whole issue takes place in the dream world, um, which just means that it's going to be super colorful, kind of wonky art, um, and a bunch of like weird creatures. There's like these like custodial fish creatures oh who are fantastic <laughs> i love the character design that they yes. use for all this weird stuff because it's it and like you said i hate fairyland it almost has like a, a scotty young like weird world in a way, vibe. Yeah. um i like that we finally got backstory in this issue yes her um, backstory yeah. yeah that we're finally figuring out why she's so adamant and how i would have thought how how it worked out and what the backstory is was completely like not what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to be like this long term, like massive, like she's had this experience her whole life and she's been like, and it was a completely different situation. And I kind of love what they did. Yeah. Like, like to kind of really build up this character really quickly. Like you get the whole thing immediately. You're like, Oh cool. I'm on your side. Let's do this. Yeah, you're definitely rooting for the good guys mm -hmm. in this one. There's no, to me, there's no doubt where it's like, oh, I, you know, I don't know, maybe there's something under the surface that we don't like. No, they're really likable characters. Mm -hmm. There's this great little back and forth between her and the cop where she puts on, I, I won't give away like the basics of what happens, but uh, she basically has to wear his skin mm -hmm. as a suit. And there's just a great little interaction between the two of them. Uh, I, yeah, I, I feel like this is a pick of the week that just... Keeps going. Yeah, and I don't put it in there because I try to limit my picks of the week each week, so, I mean... I tried to tell him this week that we should just put them all in the picks of the week and just go with it, but uh, he, he didn't agree with me. And who's writing this? Who is our writer on this? Because I feel like it's... Right, it's Smith, which is on Tyler Burton Smith. Tyler Burton Smith. Who I don't... I don't know what else they've done, and I need to find out because I'm really digging the way. I like their their use of dialogue. I do, too. The editor is Heather Antos, who is one of my favorite editors, so oh, totally really? in for that. Heather Antos is a former uh, Gwenpool editor, and you I can, can feel that. that. That's I why I specifically went with that one, because I, I was definitely... like, you can see the Gwenpool commentary like in yeah. this. Heather is great at that comedic timing mm -hmm. um, as an editor, so I think this is a fantastic uh, all-around team. Yeah, this is a fun book in general. I think it's... It's one that everyone should be reading. You know, throw it in that mixture after you get done reading the serious books. Um, yeah. Get finished with that, you know, and you'll be in such a happy place. And you're still getting that heartfelt story. Like, it's not yeah. like it's just like a complete like, oh, it's just funny and there's nothing else to it. Like, it's actually going to be a heartfelt story. You're getting yes. a, like, a detective kind of story. You're getting this action. You're getting a little bit of everything. Like, we talk about how, um, you know, We Have Demons is one of those comics that gives you a little bit of everything you want in a comic. Yeah. Slumber is doing that, too. In on the more comical side, we have demons is, is Scott and Greg, uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Kulo. So of course it goes a little bit darker. Serious, yeah. This is like the happier, like brighter version. Even though like the story isn't, it's like this is the pop punk to their metal. Right. <laughs> like yes. this is like the we're yes. happy, but we're like suffering. But it's where both sides acknowledge how good the other side yes. is. Where it's like, hey, you're not doing what we're doing, but you're doing it well. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, hit me, dot, not literally, uh, <laughs> hit me number three from AWA Upshot. This is, uh, this is another one of those books that I know you struggle to not put it in uh, your picks every time because it's a good fun yeah, story. Yeah, but I, uh, it's one of those where like, 
I really enjoy this book, but it's also like I can't show a bunch. Right. So I don't put it in the pick of the week because usually with the pick of the weeks, we talk a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. And um, with this one, I can't, number one, I can't really show you much of anything um, because right. <laughs> this issue. Because Facebook won't let us. Um, right, like that right there. You can't. No. There's, uh, maybe that, maybe. Uh, yeah, that seems kind of. There's no nudity. Yeah. That's there's just... no nudity. Um, this is basically a kind of a murder mystery set in the world of sex work. Yes. Um, we, in the first issue, um, this girl who is, she is, she's not a dominatrix. I, I, she's I kind of does both sides because she does like she does some dom and she does some sub so she's just like a pure like sex worker like right. she'll she'll it's like whatever you want her to do that's where she's gonna fall into the category like because she kind of does a little bit of everything right um and so she witnessed one of her clients being murdered and that's all i can show you um but she witnesses one of her clients being murdered and it kind of sets her off on this um, you know, kind of falling into a wrong place, wrong time yeah. kind of situation. And it just gets bigger every yeah. issue. Every issue, she's like, okay, I'm going to talk to this person. I'm going to solve this situation. And then it's like that person leads you to this other person who's now telling you about 27 other people. Right. And then it's like, oh, this just got to this. And now we've got, like, different kinds of mobs involved in, like, different gang situations. And, like, all of this keeps getting bigger and bigger. And she's like, okay, well, I guess I just have to keep going. And it's it's that's kind of the AWA cinematicness of mm -hmm. their comic books. It's like every AWA Upshot book I feel like is written for how are we going to turn this into a TV show or a movie. Like they write right. them with that intent that they are scripting out and storyboarding essentially just their programming which now they have that contract right. for everything to be turned into like, anything at any time could be a tv show and this is one of those like perfect examples of that yeah, like everything definitely. feels purely tv show episodic like drop it all on the like a streaming service right now and i would want to watch <laughs> the whole thing yeah i i and i like this issue because she kind of uh in a way dons a costume mm -hmm. and kind of goes into hero mode. Um, and I like that we got to see like all the different little facets of, you know, this world that she moves around in. Um, and it's just like, this is the issue that I was definitely like, okay, I really want to see this through to the end mm -hmm. because she's kind of turned into this like total badass character, but also there's like very little bits throughout where she kind of like fades away like there's a, a a woman in here that she worked with previously that she kind of has a crush on yeah and there's just like these brief human moments where she's like oh you know i remember our time together and it's just great it's just it's a really well written story yeah I think. this one falls into the like bad mother devil's highway kind of like real world um action adventure kind of like fly, following along mm -hmm. kind of stories like this one definitely falls into that category um and and kind of moves in the same way as those two did so i'm i'm really in for this book i love this book i hope that i know it's probably going to end on issue five oh, but there hopefully there will give us a second volume i think they should and they should definitely give us another volume because this is one of those that's absolutely just fantastic. And Krista Faust is one of my favorite AWA writers. Uh, okay. Krista Faust has a lot of books with AWA Upshot, and they've all been fantastic. And so I hope we get to see uh, more of Lulu. I hope the story is not over in two issues because Lulu's been a great character. Yeah, and I. I definitely, there's some stuff that I would like to see maybe afterwards, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it would be in this kind of same style. Yeah. Like I feel like once this story wraps up, I'd be curious to see, you know, where, I mean, is she going just further down the rabbit hole? Right. You know, I mean, what, what, where can it go from there? But I mean, I, I'm on board. I'm definitely yeah. on board. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, next up is Speed Republic issue four from Mad Cave. Oh, this is a Mad Cave. This book? is a Mad Cave book, which we don't see that. a lot of Mad Cave, and when but when we do, we seem to enjoy them a lot. So I'm glad we're we're getting some more. I hope we get more titles in general from Mad Cave. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I 
I try to think of one other Mad Cave title off the top of my head, but I can't think of one. I mean that we've had recently that we enjoyed was Bountiful Garden. Oh, that's right. That okay. was a really good one. Um, and I mean, I'm biasly going to obviously say Wolvenheart all the time. But <laughs> no matter what. Right? All the time. <laughs> but this <laughs> one specifically, uh, Speed Republic, is, you know, we've got that world where it, we're in essentially the government has taken over. They have kind of regulate where everybody's at. And they do this race every year. Yeah. And if you... Find your way to be the winner of the race. You can move into the nicer aristocratic area. The people who actually get real food and yeah. who get home. So it's kind of like the Hunger Games where they're like, hey, if you win this battle, you get to have money and live in this nice place. And much like the Hunger Games, we learn in this issue that nothing is what you hear or say. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely like opened it up to like, hey, this is actually what's going on. Um which I think now leads me to believe that this is only going to be five issues. I feel like we're, because we we talk about in this issue that we're, we're ready to, you know, damn yeah. the man kind of thing. So I feel like we might be, five or six issues might be all we get. Yeah. There's a lot of talks of finish lines in mm-hmm. this issue. Um, but, yeah, I, I really like this. I mean, it's definitely got the Hunger Games... Uh, kind of vibe to it uh kind of like meets death race in a way Mm -hmm. um but it's kind of become less about the race at this point like it's like well there's way more stuff that that we gotta take care of um and this main character continues to impress me Mm -hmm. you know after the last issue where he was on hallucinogens and you were like i don't know what at all is going on in the world what's real and what isn't okay you know, he's kind of now snapped back and was like, all right, I have to be the hero of this story. Um, and I enjoy this. There's a lot of fun stuff in this. Um, I like the whole kind of like remote control car thing mm-hmm. that is exists in this world. There's a lot of like weird characters, like the Mysterio looking person yeah. on the horse <laughs> where you're like, where did this come right. from? Right. What is this? And where is this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my the only thing that I feel this I would like to see less of is kind of speeding through this story. I feel like this should have been a 12 issue series yes. at least and we could have taken yeah. our time with some of it because yeah, there are points where it's like, okay, well now we have to go to the next thing and I'm like, but I was enjoying this thing. I want to know more about this thing or I was not enjoying this but I wasn't supposed to and I want to know <laughs> right. what this bad thing was right. that we kind of just like washed over a little bit. Yeah, I like in this issue, they kind of introduce um, a town mm-hmm. that's not really seen or that, you know, it kind of is against the, the autocrats. Um, and I like, I really wanted to know more because they kind of just like gloss over their lifestyle. And there's a little conversation about how they figured out how to recreate coffee, but there's other things they have. And I'm like, well, hold on, let's. Let's live in this town for, like, two, three issues. But I like, at the same time, while I want to live in all those things and I want to do that, I like that because we are in a race against time. Yeah, that's true. That we are, like, seeing it like he is. Like, he's, like, on this race. He shows up somewhere and he's like, oh, my gosh, what is this thing that's going on? And they're like, oh, it's this. And then it's like, okay, well... I gotta go. Yeah. Like, and so I like that they're keeping the momentum of the race and they're not actually slowing down. That is actually one of my things that I was talking about with the Hunger Games is because they tried to make the Hunger Games itself seem like a really fast paced thing. A lot of the other parts of the story drag really, really slow oh, I see. because they're trying to make the pacing feel faster in the games. And because this is just the game all the time, the pacing stays that quick pace. That's and true. so I'd like to see more just because I love everything they've developed mm-hmm. and everything they've created in this story. But from a writing standpoint, I love that they don't give it to us because they are keeping their pacing going. You know, in, in The Walking Dead, the whole point is, like, they're The Walking Dead. So it's supposed to move slow and you spend all those times. You can spend 30 issues right. listening to the governor explain something <laughs> and and live in that world for a while. But this is, like, what if you did all of that in literally in hyperdrive at, yeah. like, maximum speed? And you kind of get all those same things where you're seeing all these people groups of different kinds and all this stuff is happening. But... You have to stay 
you know, at 55 miles per hour. That's true. I mean, it is it is called Speed Republic, so... I'm, we gotta speed through the Republic. Sense. Yeah. That's the whole point, Phil. But I've enjoyed this. I've yeah. definitely enjoyed uh, Speed Republic. It was kind of one of those that, like, at first I was like, this may not be that good. And then it just... Once I realized what issue three was, and I was like, this story makes no sense. I hate this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm back. Now I'm back. And it's fantastic. If you haven't picked it up, mm-hmm. Speed Republic, Mad Cave. Uh, come in and ask us for Mad Cave titles. We'll show you some good suggestions. Uh, speaking of publishers, we always have good suggestions from. A Source Point Press, issue five of Cover of Darkness. Um, we are finally getting to the point of oh. this book. I know that was one of the reasons you were like, oh, I'm going to wait and see where this yeah. is actually going. I didn't think it was going anywhere. It is going somewhere. Hey. And there is going to be an all-out monsters attack kind of moment in this. Sweet. And I am so in for it. Uh, if you haven't read Cover of Darkness yet, this is your Universal Monsters book from Source oh, Point man, because everybody has page. one. Um, I gotta show that first page. It is... Oh, man. Yeah. That, it's, this the book gets crazy. Um, we have seen... Each issue has kind of introduced us to the backstory of the Universal Monster while also filing following this family of Romani people who are against the monsters and also might be monsters themselves. Um, This particular one, we kind of focus a lot on the werewolves, but we get to see a little bit of everybody else kind of prepping for something. And uh, we kind of see all of the connecting points in this issue that have been missing. Like when we had our issue with Dracula, he had a young girl who he had turned into... Um, a vampire and he was kind of explaining the like idea of being a vampire to her this one kind of finishes that conversation and you learn how she connects to the Romani family oh, okay. and why that whole family has been like on this move that they've been on and what's been going on I also love it because it is it, it is Vlad uh, as Dracula and he talks about when uh, he was turned into a vampire by Orla. So you get, like, cool. you're getting all of it. You're getting all of the, like, universal monsters and all the, like, lore of all the different creatures. You're seeing it come into play in each of these uh, books. So they're kind of giving you those, like, one line of dialogue up until this issue. Uh, up until this issue, we've kind of seen, like, oh, you get a page over here from the vampires. Now you get a page over here from this. This one, all of those pages kind of, like, have their point, And they all hit it. And so... We're about to we're about to get to our big big moment. Most source point books are usually about six issues long, so I imagine we're only gonna get one more. Um I could I could play in this world forever because I love the <laughs> Universal Monsters. But fantastic. Uh it's just it the werewolves in this issue look so cool. Uh they are definitely dark werewolves and not yeah. like puppies. Well I was uh, I showed that first page. I usually don't show the first page because the other one Mm-hmm. is is the info page but I, this first page i want that in like a poster a know? werewolf on a viking ship and yeah. i do love that that they're kind of like oh this this group is you know like the werewolves or a lot of them are in like the viking world and then it's like oh you've got these people over here so it's also almost like a game of risk in europe at the That's same awesome. time as like being a universal monsters game <clears throat> it's super cool i definitely recommend it like i said this is issue five um, come grab issues one through four and just fall in love with the Universal Monsters as Source Point Season. Um, all right, we've got an ending because I put the other ending, I think, in yes, fix yeah. week. So we yeah. have an, a, one book that's ending this week, which is issue five of Rain from Image Comics. This is um, a Joe Hill story being adapted by David Boer of Canto fame. And this entire story is all about we get a rainfall and it's glass shards it's nails it's slivers of metal it's all kinds of things that are not actual liquid it's terrifying it's terrifying so terrifying and it doesn't end like it just keeps coming and it's all centralized over like this one area and they talk about it kind of like expanding out from there but it's like oh well this area is the one that got it the worst and they can't really figure out if it's gone anywhere else beyond that like region because they don't really have media. But we 
see it the story opens with this happy beautiful couple in the world that they're going to build together and then we have this rainstorm and everything is sad and um you see as we move on you just kind of see these people try to keep going and you see kind of like the walking dead and things like that where it's how like oh this terrible tragedy is happening but people are actually way worse than the terrible tragedy Mm -hmm. and we follow this particular person as she's just trying to make sense of the world and kind of help people through it and just kind of figure out what's going on and in issue five we do get the answers to all of the questions that we want and you get a really beautiful ending that is like hey you know things happen um and it gets sad sometimes and it gets dark sometimes and you know rain's gonna fall it's gonna rain sometimes and we just got to make the best of what we get out of it. And it felt very both. It is a great comment. I can see why David Boer took this book on because David Boer likes to find that little bit of hope in, in the saddest, darkest places that you can find it. And that's a big thing that David talks about all the time and wanting to do with writing and to find a Joe Hill property. That's like, Hey, this is the most depressing thing you could do. Uh, I'm going to write this story that's terribly depressing and go, and then you have David come in and go, okay, but I'm going to tell that story and then I'm going to put like this little bit of hope through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, he nailed it once again, no pun intended. <laughs> um, and we have this awesome story, uh, that's just, it's absolutely beautiful and sad and depressing and just well done all the way around. Great ending. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely one that needs to be picked up, you know. You talk about, like, potential Eisner nominations. Uh, I could see this book easily getting it. Um, Because this would qualify for next year, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it's only been out this year. So, yeah, we could see that as a 2023 nomination. I could Uh, see it. I definitely could. Yeah. Uh, Up next, one shot. So we had a couple of, well, I guess that's not, that's a one shot. So we'll skip that before I go there. Uh, I should have thrown this in there. I, these consider, I consider these one shots, even though they're series because they're anthologies. Right. But I don't usually bring big two very often, but I had to bring this Electra Black, White, and Blood because it has stories from Matthew Rosenberg, Peach Momoko, and Kevin Eastman. Yes. So if you ever wondered which <laughs> black, white, and blood of a thing you should pick up, this is the one. It is yeah. technically issue four, uh, but none of them connect because right. they're just anthologies of anthologies, essentially. Um, and, you know, you get your first story, which is really cool because it's Kingpin hires Electra to go kill somebody. And he's like, I feel like your consciousness is going to be like the thing that always ruins you. Because you're too kind and you want to be nice to people. You want to see the best in people. And then the person that she's sent to go kill is Ghost Rider. Oh, wow. And, you know, she's like, uh, I could destroy you. And he's like, no, because that's not who you are. And he, like, does his, like, Ghost Rider stare. Care Bear stare that he does to kind of, like, make her see stuff. And I really love Matthew Rosenberg just building, like, just showing us how badass Electra is as a fighter and how brave she is but then also showing us that like what makes Electra stronger than everybody else is she's not afraid to kill but she's never going to kill for the wrong reason right and Matthew Rosenberg just shows that like it's such a great way with his story and then um the second story is Peach Momoko and it's a silent issue and it's just if you are a fan of Demon Days like you're basically yeah. getting an Electra Demon Days style story in that second uh second one which I guess I could, you could flip to that since yeah, I just brought that up. Show me, uh, ooh, yes, that beautiful like, one, like Peach Momoko was. just Peach Momokoing all over the place. <laughs> like it's just I don't know how else to describe that. It's just Peach doing some what awesome does, art, yeah. yeah. And again, it just lends itself so well to the black, white, and blood uh, process. And then you guys switch to the end and show off this uh, yeah. Eastman story. <laughs> It's, I mean, oh talk gosh. about somebody who was made Oof. for a black, white, and blood ser- special, Kevin Oof. Eastman. Um, and it's, it's almost like a poem. Like the whole, like Kevin's story is a poem, essentially. It is um, all about like the day of, vin- the day of justice or judgment is going to come and how Electra has like this meeting essentially with judgment. 
and how she's all she's gonna stand there and she's gonna face like her her appointment and it's it's such a good like I actually started there I was like I gotta see what Kevin Eastman did with Elektra because that's kind of like the most Ninja Turtles yeah. Marvel character you could find right and then uh I like went backwards from there but I love the page with the sigh yeah that's I was gonna uh, show that it's kind of an ad yeah. though but yeah. yeah well you know don't look at the ad just look at the awesome artwork yeah uh, I mean he he nailed it yeah I, I mean very much like you I'm not a huge big two reader I read maybe a couple of titles here and there it's got like Daniel Warren Johnson's name on right. it or Scotty Young more than likely uh, I'll check it out but I do really enjoy these mm -hmm. these black red and black, black white, white and blood. Red. Well, they are they all called black white mm -hmm. and blood? The Marvel oh. ones are. Oh, it's the DC the ones. The DCs are, the are black colors. white and red, yeah. All right, so the black white and blood, I really like these. Um and it gives some of these creators a chance to, you know, work with these characters who may not ever mm -hmm. end up getting like a full-blown series. And I love that we're living in an Electra world right now. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, just give us more Electra. It's fantastic. Um, and then, since we are talking Marvel, I just wanted to throw this out there really fast as a, a hot title. Because Marvel does... I have to cough now. <laughs> I just swallowed my wine down the wall. Uh, Marvel does the Marvel voices. It has become an ongoing thing that Marvel does. And each month kind of is... or. It seems about monthly at this point, but each, like, every six weeks or so, we have one celebrating somebody. Uh, this is the Marvel Voices Identity, which is their AAPI, the Asian American Pacific Islander uh, issue. And so we get, once again, we get an anthology of different stories, and it uh, features Shang-Chi, it features uh, Kamala, there's a Mantis story in there, there's obviously Silk shows up. Um, I just wanted to, like, throw it out there we don't have to spend too much time talking about it but i will tell you that all the stories in these are always like super moving they always have pros in there as well from creators um who have been working on these characters or who were um grew up inspired by it and i just that's the one shang chi and kamala hugging that's my that's my image uh right there it's such a great moment where kamala is like i She's actually tells Shang Chi like I feel like I can't. I'm not a good hero. I'm not strong enough to be a hero because I fall for this all the time. I always have all these people who are bad guys that I just fall for supporting them and loving them and helping them. And she's like, I guess I'm just not meant to be a hero. And Shang Chi's like, No, it takes strength to be able to see the good in people even when they don't deserve it, and you're the strongest person I know, Kamala. And so it's just this really, oh. like, big brother moment, kind of, for Shang-Chi. Yeah. Um, and I just love that we... I love that we get to see these moments of these characters, like you said, like in the other anthologies, where we are getting to see characters who, like, when have we had a Mantis-led story? Um, and so it's nice to get to actually see these characters get the spotlight and get to have people speak and, and tell the stories that they've wanted to tell that meant something to them. Yeah, I appreciate that Marvel is doing this, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I know obviously they're going to continue to appease the old school way of comic books, but at the same time, progressing forwards because they need yeah. to with all of these characters. And it again, it's great to see these characters that we don't see that often. Absolutely. You know, get these stories. I hope they continue to do this for a while. For a long time. Um, because it's definitely something that needs to happen. And if you did not get the Marvel Voices free comic book day issue, come into the shop if you're local and uh, let us know. And we will hook you up with one because I believe we still have some left. And I think everybody should check out Marvel Voices. Um, and it's right. free. Yeah, and it was free. Not that one, but the free comic book Well, no, book yeah, one. yeah, the free comic book day. Uh, I've got a couple number ones I'm going to throw your way. And then we're going to talk about all these awesome number twos because I need to do that. And so up first is, this is from Source Point, and they're called Sham Comics. And they're basically retelling of Golden Age comics and uh, in kind of mock, like parodying how ridiculous they were um, and kind of talking about some of the like, even like limit looking at some of the like, oh, this was really offensive and these are like the things we said in this was kind of offensive. They make fun of the ads that happen. Yeah. Um, which I was reading, like the ad, you can show the like back ad, like turn that chip into a chump, uh, like they are like they were taught like aren't really that different from the words on a lot of the ads that existed yeah. back in the day um but this is definitely 
uh, it's told in golden age format, so they're very, it's very wordy. Um, and I'm actually sending this home with Phil because he didn't get to read it and I need him to because it is supposed to be about these two brothers, Spud and Pud. Awesome. And their dad comes back from being on adventuring missions and he is like, oh, I found all these artifacts. And they were like, don't you mean you stole them, dad? And he was like, well, yes, I do, kids. I did steal them. And they're like, oh, that's great. And then he, they get stolen from him. And he's like, oh, now we have to go back and find the rest of the treasure from memory. Do you guys want to help me? And so the kids go on this adventure with him. And the whole time, everything is a ridiculous mockery of the the way storytelling worked back then. And to the point where, like, there's an intro story. And it's like the nerdly boys. Like, they're, they're identical <laughs> twin brothers. Except for the fact that Spud was born ten months before Pud and has a completely different mother. And it's like... Oh, my God. Where is this going? And then they even say, like, the return of their dad. The woman I, who specializes in artifact finding and womanizing. And, like, he, it's just, like... They are definitely calling out everything that was wrong with a lot of those Golden Age stories and just also still being just as ridiculous as they yeah. were. Um, it's a true parody. Uh, I read some of it out loud to one of our customers today, and he's, like, falling off of the bar still <laughs> laughing in the in the store. So um, if you like Golden Age comics but you found some of it to be ridiculous, or if you could never get into Golden Age comics because you thought they were too ridiculous, this might be something worth checking out. I, I'm one of those fans of Golden Age, but because some of it is so absurd, like just how outdated a lot of it is, it's like comical at this point that people thought that way. And they <laughs> wrote actually, stories that like way. one of the, like the, the um, nanny that they have, like the lady who raises the boys while the, the dad's out of the country, mm -hmm. she like makes a very like, she makes a comment and he's like, hey, I'm pretty sure we've determined that that term is racist now. <laughs> and she's like, well, but that's what it is. And he's like, I, like I said, I don't think they like that. Yeah. And like, he's like, people, have, we've learned. And it's so they like call it out in the book. Like they try to like make it like use the real regular dialogue. And then they're like, hey, I don't think you're supposed to do that. <laughs> like, that's not OK. Yeah. And so they like make reference to the fact that, yes, we used really terrible terms um, and went way too far yeah. in some things okay. but uh next up is from dark horse this is the shaolin cowboy is there a subtitle uh, cowboy cruel to be kin um this is a number one and this is all told from the perspective of a lizard um which is another one of those books that phil didn't get to read and i was like oh this is gonna be a phil book for sure i just got i just got attacked by a cat because oh. i put my foot on her and i didn't know she was there um, she didn't appreciate it uh yeah this is it is all about a cowboy in the old west who saves a young lizard from being eaten by its father when it is born and this is the the lizard has now an old man and he's grown up and he's telling the story to his son about this cowboy that saved him and the epic battle. And it's just like the lizard's son is like, Dad, I don't think this is the way the story went down. And he's <laughs> like, of course, it's not son, but this is the way I remember yeah. it. And because there's like a giant baby in an air balloon that like is leading the charge of like steampunk technology in the old west. Um it's an absolutely absurd, ridiculous story. Um, cool, dark, classic Dark Horse art in that, like, hyper-penciling and stuff. Yeah. But, again, it's the, it's literally told from the perspective of a lizard. So, I remember reading the original Shaolin Cowboy series that came out, and I do remember it being very absurd. The, yes. Um, and that was, I feel, I feel like that first series came out a while ago. Like a while, a while, while ago. A while ago. Um, but I'm I'm excited that they brought this world back because I do remember enjoying it. Um, it's kind of like in the same vein as like Cowboy Viking Ninja, or Cowboy Ninja Viking, whatever that one is. Where it's just like we're gonna throw a bunch of different kind of things together, mm -hmm. um, and it's just gonna be a good time with some really well done art. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad this one's back. Yeah, I love that he's like I asked the guy if I could follow him and. 
he didn't answer, so I just did. <laughs> he was like, I take that as a yes, because it definitely wasn't a no. And the son's like, I don't think that's what he wanted, Dad. And he's like, well, he should have said otherwise. Yeah. And so it's it's got, like, those little Old West kind of moments, but it's ridiculous. So uh, thanks, Dark Horse, for a ridiculous laugh this week. <laughs> um, let's see. We are going to go with House of Slaughter, issue six. This is the start of the new arc of House of Slaughter, which was the Bat City fans' pick of the year for 2020, 2021. Uh, House of Slaughter was the book of choice. And now we have an all-new creative team. Uh, so no more Chris Sheehan. We have we have a new artist. We have a new writer, and we are talking about new characters. And I need Matt to like close his eyes so you can show this book because uh, it's great. You can show this page because this doesn't give away anything. But we are following the Scarlet Mask inside the House of Slaughter now. So we learned in something is killed the children not that long ago that there are a ton of different masks. It's not just the black mask like Erica or the white mask of people like show me the pages first before you <laughs> so I can make sure you don't spoil you can show that. That's fine. Um and so we open up and we are following a new character who is a scarlet mask and we find out that this person that that wasn't necessarily their first choice of what they wanted to do. And now we kind of get to see what the Scarlet Mask role is in the House of Slaughter. Um, we get a lot of backstory on that almost immediately because they're having a conversation and they're like, oh, well, this is what we do and this is who we are. And then it goes into uh, seeing our main character get sent on a mission, which isn't something the Scarlet Mask often do. And so there's something unique about this character that we're going to learn in this story. And I honestly and truthfully am incredibly excited about that. I read this issue twice because oh, wow. there's this thing in, in something is killing the children universe uh, and especially like the house of slaughter, all of that universe where there's little clues along the way. Like James Tynion, James Tynion is a master of bread crumbs bread crumbs and his outlines that he's using in house of slaughter are also filled with them and so i read this issue and then i was like wait a second i need to know if this is what i think this is and can i figure that out from what i'm seeing and so i went back and read it again like two days later just so that i could see if like after thinking on it like what if i was going in the right direction and if there were any clues on whether or not i was right right and i don't know that there are but I have a thousand new theories, and that's my favorite thing about House of Slaughter and Something is Killing the Children, is that you can come up with... It is one of those books that actually spurs the conversation of what is happening, what is this, what does this mean, what are these theories, and, like, lets you build theories. And we don't see that all, you know, all the time anymore. Like, a lot of things, it's like, oh, it's very straightforward. I think it's this, and then right. it ends up being that. In this series, we are kind of seeing a lot of, like, what does this mean? And because this is the companion to something that's killing the children, it's like, oh, this could, is this relevant to what's going to happen in something that's killing the children? Is it relevant to stuff that's already happened in something that's killing the children? Is it just building the universe? And is this going to bring us back to this huge point where we see a completely different experience all the way around oh, wow. uh, for the ending of the story? And this issue gets you excited about all of that all over again. And so, if you are not reading House of Slaughter, you can jump in here. You don't have to have read issues one through five. However, if you didn't read issues one through five, you 100% sure because uh, it Chris Sheehan's art on issues one through five were phenomenal. But uh, check it out. It's a, it's a number one because it's completely different than what you read in the oh. first arc. You don't need to read the first arc at all. So we're calling it a number one even though it's number six. Great jumping in point. <laughs> um, all right. So now we're here. Number two, it's a number two kind of day today. Yes. We're going to talk about like three or four number twos, and I am going to let you start with A Town Called Terror. All right. A Town Called Terror, the new Niles, Steve Niles, right? The yes. Steve Niles? Yes. yes. The new Steve Niles book. Uh, this is um, a book that I think I'm not fully going to know what's going on. Until they actually reveal the plan. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, because the art in this book is just too damn good to look at. Um, but this is a story where in the first issue there's a guy who is kidnapped in the middle of the night. And taken to this town that is run by his father. Uh, who 
I may have mystical powers. We don't really quite know. But there's something going on in this town. And the rest of the world doesn't know about this town. It's just kind of one of those, like, creepy, scary towns where a lot of bad stuff probably goes on. Um, but It's like Halloween Town. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. like in its own or like parallel Hill. dimension. Yeah. Or Silent, Silent Hill. Hill. Um, but yeah, this is, he's, he was kidnapped and brought to meet with his dad and you find out why his dad brought him here. Mm -hmm. And he's basically like, Hey, you're going to help me do this thing. Cause you're the only person that knows how to do it. You're the only person I trust to do it. Uh, so you're stuck in this town until I'm done with you basically. Uh, cause his father kind of sucks. Word. His dad sucks. Yeah. Also, this is a Steve Niles book. That's not only two issues long. So it's been a true. long time since we've that seen that. True. So I'm very excited that we're getting more than two issues. This is it seems to be at least a mini, if not an ongoing, for a while. And also this is images uh Universal Monsters related book. Yes, we do definitely get a little bit yeah, it's almost like they took all of the horror movies and kind of mashed them into this small town. Right. Halloween town. Yeah. But yeah. dark. But like a creepy Halloween Halloween town. If Halloween town was made for adults and not for children. Yeah. So. But I, again, I don't think this would be in an art style that's appealing to kids either, though. No, not at all. Like, this is this is 100%. Like, it's purely, like, adult aesthetic. It's adult storytelling. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, it's one of those books, too, where the art is so dark that you're like, ooh, what's going to happen? And then when you see it, you're like, oh, my God, where did that come from? Because it, it does kind of sneak up on mm -hmm. you. And so it's a super cool story. Uh, it was one of the books that I was like, ooh, I got to read this. Like, I can't miss this one because I am super excited about where this is going. Yeah, I I was digging through the pile and I saw this and I was like, I'm trying to remember what this book was about. And then I opened it to that first page. I'm like, oh, I remember this one. <laughs> I remember this book. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is kind of one of those. And I think the running theme today for today's uh, episode is we don't need number threes for these number twos. <laughs> to know that we are on board. We are on board we are at fully these number sold, twos. Uh, because this is a book that it's like any the moment number three hits, I'm like, I can't wait to read yeah. this. Yeah. This yeah, every book in the number two pile, yeah. their their number three is gonna be what I read first. Yes. Which sucks because they're all gonna come out the same yeah, week. The same so week so. <laughs> it's always like the the same books come out in the cycle. So it's like, oh yeah. well, we're gonna be fighting over who gets to go first on a lot of these. Um Speaking of monsters, this is Count Crowley, uh, Amateur Midnight Monster Matinee, I think. Uh, Monster Hunter. Hunter. Monster Hunter. Okay. Uh, this is basically, we do one of those, like, Elvira-style show, like, with our monster expert. But in reality, monsters are real. And we have, uh, we have this girl who's supposed to be fighting these monsters. And I think it's supposed to be, like, an episode of the show, but it might be real. I... Still trying to figure that part out. Um, but she is a she is an alcoholic, or at least she pretends to be, goes to an AA meeting and finds out that this one guy is a werewolf. And at the end of epi this episode, it's the end of issue one, she goes like to help him and his girlfriend is a giant werewolf. And so in this issue, she is fighting the werewolf and you kind of see the whole fight while also learning about werewolves and how they work in this world and how she's supposed to kill them and how she's supposed to fight them. And um, it's just it's just a lot of fun. It, it's like watching like one of those late night shows that plays the and and that's kind of what issue one started with it was like hey welcome to our show we're going to show you this episode about this werewolf right. hunter girl and so we're now watching this movie play out essentially while we're on count crowley Crow, we're watching count crowley crowley's show i cannot speak today oh my god <laughs> watching count crowley's show and he is telling us uh, showing us this movie essentially about this werewolf hunting girl and her cat yes cat Cat that knows everything. Um, I love this cat because they draw in, like, the cat shaking its head. So you see the cat's head move sometimes. Yeah. It looks like it has two heads. But it's just the cat, like, telling the girl that she's stupid. And I love that scene. And she's on the phone and she's like, well, how am I supposed to know what the vampire's uh, special books are? And the cat just keeps trying to get in her way. And she just keeps, like, leaning away from the cat. And finally the cat knocks a glass off right. the counter. And she's like, are you telling me that you know? And the cat just looks at her and she's like, okay, I guess the cat knows the answers. And I'm like, yes, we're taking the cat on the adventure. And honestly, that's how you tell me. 
You take the cat on the adventure. Yeah, that's all it takes. Also, this is written by David Dasmalchen, who is in pretty much every movie ever, uh, especially blockbusters, but most notably he was Polka Dot Man uh, in the Suicide Squad movie. Uh, so I'm excited. Again, this has kind of the, been the running theme with um, having actors come over and tell comic book stories and... I hope this maybe leads to a TV show that he's going to be in. in and he did a teaser video. Um, oh, yeah, that's for, right. For we the talked first about this issue. with issue yeah. one. Before mm-hmm. issue one came out, he did a teaser video. So I thought it was actually like a public access show because he had done the video. So I thought it was a real show. But he did a video where he was Count Crowley and he was showing us uh, the thing. And he was like, oh, we're back. But it was like super low budget, supposed to be low budget. So it kind of looked like... The vampire guy that lives in the basement on the IT crowd. Oh, yeah. He looked like that. (laughs) And if that guy was doing Uh, a show about monsters, like that's this. I'd watch that. I would watch that. I would watch that. And it was wonderful. So I got to find find out if that trailer is available for you all to see. Uh, Next up, Corollary, issue two from Source Point Press. Uh, I love... I love that this looks like somebody colored it with color pencils. It's my favorite. Yeah, the big draw for this book to me is definitely the art. Um, I am also very intrigued by the story, but I will continue to come back for the art because it's just it's just wonderful to look at. Um, so this is Corollary. In the first issue, we learn that we live in a futuristic world where um, twins... Um, if one twin dies, then the other one dies. Yes, and everybody has a twin. And everybody has a twin. And there's all these possibilities of this world that we're going to open up with, but we are introduced uh, to uh, this main character here, and she is kind of an anomaly because her twin has died, but she is still alive. So she kind of goes around and does all these missions, um, goes to all these different planets and kind of talks about you know how it happened and she also like battles people Mm -hmm. on every planet because everyone wants to fight her for some reason um and in this issue we find out um a little bit about how she's able to do what she's doing um but also a backstory as to why you know so we get the uh the why and the how in this issue um and it's great yeah I love the character. I love the main character. I love kind of the back and forth um, with uh, the the side character that we are introduced mm-hmm. as to who it is at the end of last it, the yes. last issue. Um, but this is just kind of like a fun space romp, mm-hmm. you know, with a nice little twist to it and an interesting world, you know, because there's people in here who talk about how like. They basically just, like, lock their twin up. Yeah. So they, they... They're like, hey, we're just going to completely remain, like, it, there's some people who, like, I lock them up in a cage so that they can never die. And then others are like, yeah, they're on the other side of the galaxy and we don't ever talk to them because yeah. we just don't want to know. Um, but, yeah, this is this is a really fun book. It's a really fun book and... Um... I love I love the characters already. Yes. And yeah. yeah, like you said, the main character is just absolutely fantastic and this like secondary, like sidekick kind of character is is absolutely great. And um it kind of feels like a less uh less misogynistic bordering of uh, Marjorie Finnegan. Like the way like yeah. she kind of like the 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 way that the character talks and the tone of voice that they use kind mm-hmm. of feels like a, a kid friendly almost version of that. Yes. Or a YA friendly, I guess I should say, like a young adult at least friendly version of that story where we get that same kind of snark, but there's not any of the sexual, unnecessarily sexual content around it. Yeah, and I enjoy that. I I definitely Mm -hmm. like that this feels more like, yeah, like a YA book, Mm -hmm. um, but with, you know, kind of the fun um, sci-fi twist that you can add to it. But I've enjoyed this. Again... The running theme here is I don't need an issue three to know I'm on board that I, I I'm on board for this because it's a great main character. Um, there's a lot of like really fun side characters mm-hmm. throughout, and they're just gonna continue to give us that. So. Yeah, I love this because you picked up this book today and you were like, "Corollary, did I read issue yeah. one of this?" And I was like, "It's the twin book," and you were like, "Oh, I gotta read this." Yeah. And then you like started reading it, and I was like, "Yes, this is a 
It's a great one. Like, you weren't, like, you couldn't remember it, but then by the time right. you got to the end of issue two, you were, like, or, like, a trigger for issue one, you were, like, oh, man, that book was good. And then you finished issue two, and you were, like, can they all be picks of yeah. the week? And yeah. I was, like, they can yeah. all be picks of the week. Number two is our pick of the week. The number two. This episode brought to you by the, uh, the number, number two. two. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, this was the first book I read. Yes. In in the pile today, the moment you said it, I was like, "This, I'll start here. This is a good starting point." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> up next in our number twos are magic. Uh, is breakout number two from Dark Horse. Uh, we were just talking about how, like, Matt and I were explaining to a customer that you and I have an Ocean's Eleven problem. Uh, the other, yesterday or today, I can't even remember time to mix together. And the next two books will prove to you exactly why. Uh, first up is Breakout from Dark Horse. Can I admit something? I watched Ocean's Eleven like three days ago. <laughs> I'm not disappointed to hear that at all. I did. <laughs> I was trying to find a movie to watch before, like while I eat dinner and slowly it's work towards going to bed. Crazy. And I was like, I'm gonna watch Ocean's Eleven, and uh, it's still one of my favorite movies. It's so good. Yes. Anyways, Breakout. Breakout. Uh, Breakout is all about a group of teenagers who are planning an Ocean's Eleven style heist. And they are well aware that that's what well, they're doing because they even mention it. Yes. There's but even an Ocean's Eleven reference in this in, book. In both issues so yeah, far. Yeah. yeah. Like the dad was super obsessed with Ocean's mm-hmm. Eleven. So like the son is using it as his model for what he's doing. Right. But here's the twist on that story. We live in a world where aliens have invaded and they are taking children and they only take children up to their alien spaceship cube type things. Nobody's ever come back and nobody really knows 100% what it looks like inside, but everybody's kind of gotten a little bit of glimpses here and there on their Mm -hmm. cell phones before the aliens take them. And our main character, Liam, his brother was taken by the aliens, and he refuses to let his brother be murdered or, like, captured or whatever permanently by these aliens. So he gathers a ragtag team of people in a true Ocean's Eleven style, like, literally, like, sits there oh my and, like, gosh, yes. evaluates each person in the same way yep. uh, to build out his team so that they can break out the people from the prison cube yeah it's it's a prison break series but it's really wonderful because it's so tropey like like you said in the first issue you get the like okay we need our tech guy okay we need our you Mm -hmm. know our strength and then this issue is the montage Mm -hmm. of them planning where it's like there's even the moments where He's like, we need um, a flame hot enough to burn through tungsten steel. And she's like, I can't do it. He's like, we'll get a better flamethrower. Yeah. We'll get this. You got to jump higher yeah. and jump higher. Yeah. Like, Make we need, it you, stronger. Make it faster. It's we like, need more hands. Do we need more hands? <laughs> like they even use the, do we need more hands? <laughs> like, it's so great. Like the constantly doing that. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's a great story because again you know where it's going most yes. of the time but you still love it it's still a lot of fun and I felt you fall in love with all the characters like you're already like rooting for them to have their like instantly you're like because you know them because they are archetypes right. at this point most of it, it, they just <laughs> filled in a spot yeah. so you already know like who's gonna be on which side and how it's gonna break down and everything and it works so well because you can just fall instantly into the story and you're like I'm in I want to know like are we gonna make this happen and are we gonna do this prison break and you know what. I love that show too. So judge away. I yeah, love. Oh, I love yeah, Chris I, I was Wentworth a big fan of Miller was yeah. a phenomenal. So I big love. Fan. I mean, he's Captain Cold. You know, he, he's Captain Cold. Like, how can fantastic. you not love him? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. This book is. It's great. I mean, one thing that you can definitely do in a story is if you lay out the plan, and I sit there and I'm like, okay, well now I just want to see that plan. Right. Okay, I'm in. Let's do this plan. In this and book. And then I know it. that the plan is <laughs> yeah. going to go wrong and like and I'm I'm here to see how you figure it out. My and again going back to the Ocean's 11 thing just one more <laughs> that I just I love because it's straight from Ocean's 11 there's the scene where he's like uh the old guy is like um 
oh, so you're saying once we go through the security system that we can't get through, and then we have to get into the vault that we don't know how to open, and after all that, then what? And they have that moment they in this, and we're like, moment. yes! <laughs> <laughs> Where they're like, oh, cool, we do all of those things, and then what happens? They're like, and then we're stuck on an alien spaceship, yeah. and we gotta get out. And it's like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, this is Zach such Kaplan a fun watched book. a lot of Ocean's Eleven, and I'm here for yes. that. Let's, let's keep going. And then said, hey, I'm gonna write a comic for Ocean Eleven fans, because <laughs> you're, why doing, not? It. you're yeah. doing such a great job. Uh, and you know, if that, if aliens aren't the way you like your Ocean's Eleven, then how about Kaiju? <laughs> Even better. (laughs) Here's another, here's another issue that tells you the plan. Yes. Issue two of volume two of Kaiju score, score, steal from the gods, I believe is the the, the subtitle. Yes. Uh, Oh, this is from Aftershock, which, you know, we love seeing all these great books coming out from them and go on. What's your plan? How do you love it? I mean, when... Kaiju score the first series ended. I was like, I'm so bummed this is four issues. Why why can't we just keep going with this? And then after Shaq said, Hey, you're in luck. It's not your birthday, but here it is. This is volume two of Kaiju Score. And it follows the character that I wasn't expect them to follow, which was Michelle. Yeah. Um, from the first series. And now it's her team. And of course, she's not out there trying to to deal with these monsters and her heists. But somehow she gets pulled right back into it. Um, and this one is even bigger and crazier than the one before. These are bigger kaijus. They're mm-hmm. god-level kaijus. Um, and they have to go steal a treasure from inside the kaiju. Inside the kaiju. They have to like... go into the digestive tract of a sleeping kaiju and steal this giant treasure. Inside a government facility. Yes. Which I really like. This is so the page that I have, this is where they're telling the plan, but I like that they have this map mm-hmm. of this facility that they've built around a kaiju. Um it's Yeah. What more do you need? <laughs> this book has everything that I want. I comic. will tell you there you know, you could get more because this keeps case the cl- closed captioning on our thing today keeps saying after Shaq. Mm. Instead of after shock. And so now I just think that you're going to see a kaiju score with Shaq in it. <laughs> Stop it. So there is your more, Stop Phil. It. Yeah, so Stop if you make it. a movie, you can just put Shaq in it. and it's... They yeah. are making a movie. Yeah. They are making a movie. Yeah. That is a true they story. They are making but... a movie of the first series. Of the first volume. Um, which makes absolute sense to me. I mean, look, if you like the absurdity of like Fast and Furious, you know, where you're like, how much more ridiculous can this possibly get? This is that. Yes. And you if know? you haven't read Volume 1, we do have trades of Volume 1, and you should read Volume 1 because it is so much fun. Because that is all them trying to go in when everybody else is going out of a kaiju attack. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering how they would make it bigger and go harder, and having to go inside of a kaiju, inside of a government facility, is definitely taking that up a thousand yes. times. Like, last time we were just robbing an art museum in the middle of a kaiju battle. Right. This time we're robbing a kaiju, and it's it's kind of like sending the dwarfs in after Smaug's treasure, except for the <laughs> fact that you're going inside the dragon instead of just in his treasure hole. So, it's fantastic. It's great. I love Michelle. My favorite is TG though. The gardener. The gardener. Yeah. That's what TG stands for. I love this character. He's like. I also love that a guy makes a, a joke about it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, two pages later, he proves to you that he's definitely way more than than that. Yeah, these are really lovable characters. And we get actual bad guys in this volume. In the mm-hmm. last vo- yeah. volume, the bad guy was kind of just the kaiju. Yeah. Uh, and, like, the, yeah. like so, you know, like, other rivaling gangs and things like that. But this time mm-hmm. we seem like we're going really hard on what the bad guys are going to be. And uh, I'm I'm kind of in uh, just to see where this I I'm a hundred percent in on where this is gonna go. Um, you can make as many kaiju score volumes as you want. I'm gonna read all of them. Like next, let's follow the gardener. 
<laughs> like, yes. Just give him yes. his own spinoff next. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah, and I definitely think they can do that. Like, they, she goes back, and I cannot for the life of me remember the character's name, but she goes back and sees the, have, yeah. the guy from who was the main character in the first series. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that they're just going to continue to build out this world, yeah. and I want that to just forever be what they do. Yes. All right, so now those are the number twos that brought you, again, this episode of Mind on Your Weekend brought to you by the number two. Um, And I have one more in Picks of the Week, but I'm going to get there later because we're going to start our Picks of the Week with something different. So those are our hot new titles. Here we go with our Picks of the Week. We are. Go- I'm going to throw it to you first, Phil, with a Source Point one shot, which we don't see a lot of one yeah. shots from Source Point Press, but here we have My Brother Teddy. Oh. What an emotional journey this book was. What an emotional journey. Uh, I had to read this one twice. Um, This is very much one of those stories where we're going to show you uh, like a kid's fantasy. But we're actually going to we're going to show you the world that they play in here. Um, So this kind of follows his teddy bear on these like crazy adventures yeah and i like that the title is my brother teddy and i wasn't mm-hmm. sure that it was going to be about a teddy bear but then we uh, yeah. open it up and it's about a teddy bear yes which i was like wait a second yeah because i felt the same thing like I, I, or or maybe like in the sense of like i thought that the teddy bear was going to represent something something else. else um but no that's not the case at all um and you get this really wonderful story of this teddy bear that's going on this adventure and it involves like growing up Mm -hmm. and having to leave behind certain things and just (sighs) it was it was really well done i actually used this we had a workshop today and i actually taught i already used this book in the workshop um for conversation because it does it's you know we've got the scared little boy in a storm and the teddy bear literally suits up in armor mm-hmm. and goes into the closet to fight the monsters in the closet on behalf of this boy and it does it just kind of we just see his battles we just keep right. seeing the teddy bear facing the battles and then you get that moment of the boy realizing like he has to fight for the bear now and you know, oh, like I have to, I have to defend my stuffed animal. And he goes in, and he's fighting the battles. And then just the the beautiful like ending to this story was just it, it was absolutely wonderful because like if you had that stuffed animal as a kid, that was like this is my like my best friend, like this is who I rely on. And then you have that moment where you're like you find it again, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, like this. We went on so many battles together, like everything we did together, and you remember it, and it all comes back, and it and it still impacts you, and it's like I got through so much in my life because I had this best friend mm-hmm. or this brother in arms, like my teddy bear, and it's all silent. The fact that this was like an entirely like you just have like these breaking points of like telling you where we are, yeah. like this is it's it's absolutely great like story. Um, of just living that experience all through silence, a uh, silent issue, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's fantastic. Which is crazy because when uh, I moved into the place that I'm in now, I found my teddy bear, and that teddy bear is currently in my bed <laughs> right now, cuddled up with my cat. Aww. Um, because I was like, you know what, like, it's it's crazy that I I number one I didn't know I still had it. But it was actually the teddy bear that my mom gave me before I moved uh, to Austin because my parents were divorced and originally my mom wasn't going to move with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was going to stay in Atlanta. And so the last time I spent with her, she got me this teddy bear and I just found it again. And like very much like this, like all these memories rushed through my head of like, oh, I remember this and like all the times we spent together. Um, so this was like very personal yeah. to me when I read this. I was like, "Oh gosh, this this strikes a chord right there." It's actually funny that you you got yours when moving to Austin. I got a teddy bear from my my father when my parents got divorced. Uh, he gave me a teddy bear for like that first like Christmas or mm-hmm. birthday, like I guess Christmas after it happened, and uh, I had that and I took it to college with me it went everywhere with me and I actually came to visit Austin before I moved here 
and I left it in the hotel room. Oh, no. And I could not find, because I brought it with me, and I could not find it, and I called the hotel, and I called the hotel, like, multiple times trying to get different people, so, like, maybe somebody would give me a different answer, and I never got the teddy bear back. And then I ended up moving to Austin. And so I'm always, like, that was, it was, like, for me, like, Austin is, like, literally the growing up point in life because it's like where I lost my like my bear that had been with me since I was five years old and Uh, so it's like uh, Austin was like this distinguishing mark in my life because that's where like I had to learn to face like my battles on my own yeah and I had like everything in Austin I've always felt like that was like fighting my battles like like on my own until I got mad but now I have a buddy (laughs) now I have a giant human teddy bear yeah but yeah great story yeah Yeah, it is a one it's just shot, a one yeah. shot. And there's actually a letter at the back where they kind of talk about how, um, you know, like they were grateful that they were able to put this out. Yeah. Um, but that this was all that they needed to get out. Um, but yeah, and the art in this book, everything about it's just wonderful. And it's only one shot, you know, so you're not investing in like a 10 to 12, 15 issue series. Um, but definitely pick it up. Yeah. Um. Since we were talking about the power of number two this week, um, Alice Ever After issue two came out, and this is from Boom Studios, and it's Stan uh, Ponsaint. Pono, how do you say his name? Panosian. Panosian is, is that I how you say it? Or, okay. Or Panosian. Panosian. That's it. Ooh, that there was you go. Panosian. Dan Panosian. Um, this is fantastic. I am a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. It is one of those things that gets me every time, and this is very true to the Alice in Wonderland like book series uh mm-hmm. the not series the duology it's only two books this is very much um in that world but we follow alice as she we've learned that alice is a drug drug addict and uh whether or not wonderland is real is kind of up for debate uh but alice has checked herself in her family was going to put her in an asylum and she's decided to put herself in there after her drug dealer is killed And so Alice checks herself into this asylum and issue one is all about like Alice doing her drugs and everybody wondering what's going on with Alice and then her checking herself in at the very end of the issue. And issue two takes place in that asylum. And what I love about this is I don't know if Wonderland is real or not (laughs) while reading this book because it is all it could all be what Alice go the place Alice goes to to deal with her like everything happening and whether or not she physically goes there or she just mentally like remembers things in terms of Wonderland because she's trying to not deal with reality or whether it's drug induced it could be any of those things which is all a matter of great writing because all of those things could be real and I don't know which one it is yet and I love the way they do this. This is very Victorian, though, in the writing style. It feels like you're reading Alice in Wonderland um, because it is kind of heavy on the like all the storytelling. But the way each of the people are worked through, like Tweedledee and Tweedledum are basically the security guards of this prison, <laughs> and they are terrible. It's not a prison, it's an asylum. But they're terrible. And they are after her, like, at, like they're mistreating Alice already. And you find out that they mistreat all the prisoners. And you've got the, the headmistress, who's basically the queen of hearts. Um, and so it's curious, and curiouser, um, to see, like, how this is all going to, like, play out and what's real and what isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and the people that she's meeting along the way all seem to have some element of somebody from Wonderland which is very Wizard of Oz and not Alice right. in Wonderland. You know, Alice in Wonderland, we didn't ever see any of her family members, so we don't know if they were, if it was all a dream, like like it could have been. But in the Wizard of Oz, we do see everybody as kind of somebody. Well, in uh, this story, we're kind of seeing a Wizard of Oz-type experience hmm. for Wonderland where everybody is also in the real world. And so it could be that Wonderland isn't a real place, but it could also still be that it is. And so I like... I like that experience that we're having and the way that the world is being shaped. And honestly, this is just hardcore, incredible writing. In the same way that, like, Animal Castle is really heavy, but the writing is just spot on the whole way through. That's how this book has been. And um, I don't have much left of issue one. So if this is a book that you are like, I kind of want to check it out, move quickly. 
Um, because this is going to be one of those books that by the time issue three rolls around, so many people are going to have jumped on it that I'm not going to be able to get it again. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be like, crap, how did I miss out on Alice Ever After? So do not sleep on it. If we're not, if you're watching this on online and you're not, we're not your LCS, go to your LCS and grab it now because you're not going to have a lot of chance. It's boom. So you know that it's good, yeah. but also it's. It's Alice in Wonderland. It is one of the best Alice in Wonderland retellings I've seen in a really long time. Ooh. So, um, all right. Now let's let's uh, get sad in another imaginary slash real world. Uh, the end of Bolero is here. This yes. is issue uh, five. Yeah, five. Five of five, five, of five yeah. uh, from Image. Yeah, what a crazy ride. What a crazy ride. And if you have been keeping up with this story... Uh, it's about a girl who struggles with um, life. I was going to say relationships, but it's just life. Just life in general. Just life in general. Um, and she meets a guy, mm-hmm. or she makes out with a guy in a car, who More then accurate. takes her to this cat, uh, which I know sounds crazy. It's a magical cat, um, who gives her the ability to travel through 53 different parallel two wasn't it because she goes to too many oh yes 52 52 uh 52 different times that she can jump to parallel universes and just kind of like live in that world Mm -hmm. um and it has basically been a series of going through her jumps Mm -hmm. um and at the end of issue four um something happens something crazy happens the giant catalyst that kicks off into this final issue which, um, the way that I describe this is when you watch those, like, real high-concept art films where you're like, I have no idea what exactly is going on, but I'm here for it because it looks really good and I kind of like where it's going. That's this issue for me. I was so confused. But it was so fun to look at and... It's a very crazy ending. And it is. And we talked about it because we both were like, okay, so that ending, like, I don't know how I got here. Right. But I am on this journey with you. I'm not really sure how we got here. But the destination you just took me to was worth all of the confusion I had the whole way through, including... The majority of this issue, I got confused along the way in this issue. I had to make sure I didn't miss something. And yet then you have that beautiful moment. And, you know, our our second place book for last year from our fan vote was Layla Star. Yeah. And this has that moment kind of like you see in Layla Star where you're sitting on the beach and you have that conversation with yourself, essentially, yeah. of, okay, this is what life is, and this is why life is, and this is how life is, and this is who I am in this life. And I can't do anything about any of those things, and that's okay. Right. Because I thought I had it all figured out, and I thought I had to solve this problem, but it turns out life isn't actually a problem. Life is the experience and life is the point. The problem is the point. Yes. And I love the way this book kind of spells that out for you along the journey because you go through this whole process with this character and you're like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to figure this out. And the truth of the matter is, is that you kind of won't. Yeah. And you're supposed to be confused. And that's what makes it beautiful. Yes. I'm sorry, there's so many pages just now that I really wanted to show you, but I can't because of the nudity. Mm-hmm. Um, but In, like, the Carmen sense of the way. Like, yes. we're just on an astrological yeah, plane like it, of ourselves. Yes. And it just so happens that when she takes this journey, uh, she's naked. She's a little naked. Um, but this book, good lord. Mm-hmm. Good lord. I'm confused by half of it. But I'm in love with all of it. Yes. Who well, has the best idea? I mean, it is fantastic. I want to see this much like Layla Star get nominations. Mm-hmm. I want to see it get talked about because it's really great. And all of these books are oversized issues. Yeah. Um, so you're getting five kind of like very oversized issues. And it, two, it's like I was reading through this. And I was like, I have no idea where this is going. 
but I also don't care where it's going. And then it gets there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I kind of want you to give me like five to ten more pages of this story. Like I don't, much like Layla Star and Carmen, I don't want this to end. Yeah. But it's over. And also like Layla Star and Carmen, they should have brought, Bolero should have come with tissues at the end. Yes. <laughs> like it yes. should be one of those like, Ugh. those books are the kind of books that you need to serve like tissue, like sell like branded tissues mm-hmm. with your with your comic as like the hey you're gonna need these it's gonna hit you right in the feels yes mm-hmm. yeah uh lastly piece of the week we've got a new kyle starks book which yes. is the writer of six sidekicks of true keaton and this is also from image and it is i hate this place it has an alternate title with a different issue oh it does it does i can show it on the in on the internet right i just can't show it in the i just can't have it face out in the store it does have an alternate title. There you go. Oh. I can show that? Yeah. I think you can. This is our after hour show. Aside. Yeah. This is this show starts at nine o'clock because this is not our kid friendly store. We or show. Not we are kid friendly store. This is not our kid friendly <laughs> show. <laughs> All right. Uh so it starts at nine o'clock on purpose. It's now like eleven o'clock at night and there's a reason for that. We cause we are gonna show you that this book is actually called Fuck This Place. Yes. Yes. But for the sake of having it out on the shelves and in stores, uh, it is going to be called I Hate This Place. Um, and I love this place. I love this place. I do too. Yeah. It's such a magical, wonderful place. Uh, so this is the story of a couple who uh, one of the women inherited a... Uh, Farm. Uh, yeah, a cattle ranch. Um, and them and their partner are heading out there to live this life. And it turns out that, um, it's uh, on a, I assume on a track of land that's just where crazy shit happens. I will say, uh, somebody who has an uncle who is a farmer who has uh, all of that land and cows, please don't leave it to me. Um, after reading this book, I was like, don't ever, if you, Aunt Aunt Leah, Uncle Cliff, if you ever need somebody to leave your farm to, I don't think that I need it after reading this book. Can I admit something to you? You want it. (laughs) Uh, no, I had an uncle, Uncle N.C., uh, who had a dairy farm out in Tennessee, and when he passed, I was the first person on his list. (laughs) Hey, do you want to, uh, take over this dairy farm? No. No. I really don't. I'm not a farmer. And I am not a farmer either. And after reading this book, I don't want to even live on no. the land. Yeah, no. uh, because they do. They move to the land and we find out everything that you could imagine in a horror everything. movie could be there. Yes. It's, it's all of it. And I love that Kyle even says that in his letter at the back. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't know. I thought I kind of want to do a book about aliens, but I kind of want to do a book about ghosts, but I kind of want to do a book about zombies. And I kind of want to do about a book about like a creature in the woods. You yeah. know what? What if they were all there? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's how you get to the point where the partner is like, fuck this place. This yeah. place is awful. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, well, no, let's stay in this place. Like, you're going to suffer. But I'm going to be But I'm going to be it. so entertained by your suffering. I do like, though, that they're thrust into this world and the partner is a doomsday pepper. Mm-hmm. Like, it's such a great combination because the other one, uh, she's kind of like, not a hippie, but, but kind of, but kind of, and they're very much opposites. Like there's a sequence where she's like, where do I put my guns? And she's like, far away from me, please. She's like, Hey, we're, we're in the middle of nowhere. You never know what's out there. Who protects you, baby? And she's like, you do. <laughs> also the person who said, fuck this place in the beginning was like, maybe we just stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just build our bunker out here and we I become great, cattle farmers. Great place to just, you know, build a bunker and yeah. be prepared. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's um, it's got everything that, that I would want. I, I love, there's like a, a little room in the house that has a bunch of VHS tapes. And they kind of just like slowly unravel and then explain to you what's going on. Right. And at the same time, I was like, they show the room with the VHS tapes, and there's the one that's like a different color that's unlabeled, and I'm like, don't watch that video. (laughs) Like, did you not see the ring? Don't watch that video. And I love that Kyle is throwing in 
all of those little homages to different horror movies. Like, there's a, an homage to everything, which is what Six Sidekicks to Trigger, of Trigger Keaton right. was. It was an homage to both, like, those action movies and Quentin Tarantino. And this is kind of, like, now we're doing a parody of horror movie, Cabin in the Woods, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. This is very much like a Cabin in the Woods. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to have, you know, some of that humor to it. Um but it's going to be a great story. And then they mentioned, like, the horned man in the woods, yeah. and I was like, I just want to know all about the horned man. Right. Like, why is he someone you should avoid? Give um, me all of it. But, yeah, this is, it's going to jam-pack all of that into this one story, and I think it's going to be a ton of fun. Yes. Um, I was so stoked to see this. Uh, you know, Kyle Starks is, just because of Six Sidekicks, is one of those writers where it's like, I'm going to write your name down on a sheet of paper, and just remember to always read whatever has your name on it. Um, but yeah, this is one of those number ones where I'm like, I don't need an issue to. I don't need to know anything else to know that I'm sold on everything else that comes out in this book. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. It's going to be great. And, uh, you know, I hate it because I love it. Yeah. <laughs> love this place. They hate it and we love we it. We love it. Yes. It's fantastic. I can't wait. Oh, those are our picks of the week. We, uh... Again, the number two is our pick of the week, but uh, you had some good ones out there. We I'm glad we had some new number ones to get us started uh, for some new series. And now we've got a lot of books in stock this week uh, still to go. So uh, actually a new number one from Milestone and DC is Duo, which really quick, if you don't know the Duo team, this is a couple who is, uh, they kind of invent like, the ability to, like, read each other's minds and they can kind of solve all of the problems in the world with this, like, nanobot technology and something happens and now they're kind of, like, one person. And uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting story. Uh, Earth Prime. This is our Earth Prime is the title of the series. It's this issue four of six and this one is all about uh, Star Girl. And I love that it's called Earth Prime because it's, like, their primetime TV because it's all yeah. the CW stuff. <laughs> Let's just... We're, we're, we're just not even yeah. gonna... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I got really excited. The other day I saw that she is going to be at Dallas Fan Expo. The cover B is the show cover. So if you need that, I think I put it in your box. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> I think I already saved you one of the show yeah, cover because I, I assumed you wanted it. Yeah, I saw that the other day and I was like, well, I guess I'm going to spend money and get her to sign something as well. Finally, a, a, a time when it makes sense for an actor to sign your comic. She is on the cover of that comic. Yes. So, yeah. uh, TMNT, Best of the Rat King. This is all of the classic stories that feature the Rat King. from TMNT. Such a weird choice for the next character. Really, like, we're going to have done do, so many other We're doing choices. all of them now. We're just going for it. Uh, Fables is back. This is the return of Fables. This is like issue 152 or something crazy yeah. of Fables. It's back. 151. Uh, 151. Or uh, if you've never read it, this is a number one. It is a new arc. You can jump in. Uh, I'm going to be honest. All I know of Fables is the Telltale game. Uh, yeah. Oh, Wolf of among us and so josh though uh if you've met josh if you've come to our store you might have met our volunteer josh who's here all the time he is a huge fables fan and he's very excited because this is like original creative team back on it um uh new masters issue four uh this is a great wonderful series um i i love it it's locked you have to sit down and really dive into into New Masters, but it is a great Afrofuturistic story. It's a trade weight for me. Uh, Catwoman issue forty three oh, is see. That's out. Right. Um, this is the AAPI. Yeah, yeah. I was Catwoman at first. Not... I was like, "Why are you not showing the Ginny Frizen cover?" But the, um, that makes sense. That makes also, because I don't have any more of the Ginny Frizen cover, so oh. uh, and I'm not sharing mine with the world. That's fair. Uh, Fantastic Four, issue 43. This is still part of the Reckoning War. Um, Eternals, issue 12, with this cool Thanos cover. Yeah. Um, so I, Brian grabbed that? He did, and he did not know it was out, so I got to be the one to surprise. <laughs> uh, the Flash, 782. We, I'm wearing my Flash shirt in honor of the Flash being out. Uh, new Mutants, number 25. Finally back with some more New Mutants, and uh, some great magic covers. All of the covers were great for magic this week. 
Speaking of great covers, Nightwing, oh number 92, oh Nightwing sh stretching with the dog. Wow. I had oh so many people ask me, are you getting the cover with Nightwing and the dog? And I was like, the one where he's stretching? And they were like, yes. And I was like, absolutely. Don't you worry. I've got it. It's wonderful. It's super hot. We all love it. Can I just say I appreciate that DC is finally realizing that Nightwing is just one giant thirst trap. Have you one seen Nicholas Scott's swimsuit cover yes. of Night? Oh my God. I have, yes. Yeah. Nicholas Scott, I love you. <laughs> the Good whole, Lord. like, Nicholas Scott was like, hey, I'm going to make, I am going for this. If you're going to give me a Nightwing swimsuit cover, I'm going all in. And I, I applaud, I applaud you, Nicholas Scott. Uh, <laughs> issue two of uh, Mortal X-Men. Also, Nicholas Scott's uh, Nightwing on that swimsuit cover needs to be played by Anson Mount. Because yes. he has Anton Mount's like jaw yeah, and I oh my gosh. That. Also, let's just let me just want Anton Mount in that <laughs> in that outfit. Let's just be honest. Uh X-Men Red, issue two, Storm, uh leading Mars, which is super cool. Uh Venom Lethal Protector, issue two. Not to be confused with L Venom Lethal Protector from the nineties, but we are seeing uh you know, a resurgence of that. Uh, Thor issue 25. This is a massive, massive issue of Thor. Um, and it is all part of the Hulk banner war where basically Donny Cates was like, I'm going to take both of my toys and I'm going to make them fight. Donny's literally sitting in the sandbox with his Hulk action figure and his Thor action figure like, what happens if I do this? And that's what we get from this thing. Uh, Transformers issue 43 on the IDW while they still have it. Uh, Black Hammer Reborn, issue 12 from Dark Horse. Armor Clads, issue 3 from Valiant. Um, ex the Excellent, issue 3, obviously from Marvel. Um, and the All Reds. Let's just... Uh, the it's Excellent all from the All Reds. Yeah. <laughs> um, X-Force, issue 28. Wolverine Patch, issue 2. Uh, Star Wars, Han Solo and Chewbacca, issue two. See, this is the week of number two. Yeah. Because we also have Spider-Punk issue number two. And I actually am out of Spider-Punk one, I believe. Mm. And I wanted to read Spider-Punk. And I didn't get to do it. So if you are watching and you are local and you have a copy of Spider-Punk number one, you want to lend me. Thanks. It's a cool cover, too. I know. Yeah. There's also a Junie Ba cover, which Ooh. is super awesome. Um, the Marvels, issue ten. Uh, Savage Avengers are back. This is the all new, all different Savage Avengers, and I brought the uh, Cloak and Dagger and Conan cover because why not? Why? Why did they have to do that? Why did they call it all new, all different? It made Josh very angry. I, I, I was hoping that after they did the all new, all different stuff originally, that they would have been like, let's again. put this to rest and never use that <laughs> title. But here we are, all new, all different Savage Avengers. Um, I hate Marvel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Silk. Uh, scroll this is a scroll variant of Silk number five. I hope that this is not the end of the Silk series. I know the last Silk series got like a mini. It was only five inches long. I hope we keep going. Because yes, Silk needs to just have an ongoing. Give her an ongoing. Just give the woman an ongoing series. She's such a great character. Iron Fist issue three is out. Uh, Batman, Superman, World's <laughs> Finest issue three. And then, uh, finally, something that has not gotten the attention it deserved this week, but the Days of Future Past homage variant of Shadow War Zone with, DC. from DC. DC is homaging Days of Future Past with Deathstroke and Deadshot on the cover. And I don't know why everybody is not freaking out about this cover for DC homaging Days of Future Past with Deathstroke, but I freaking love it. Love this is it. a new series? This is a new series. It's a new event that's going on right now. Shadow War uh, is a, a, an event that's kind of spurred out of the Deathstroke Inc. series. Um, oh, really? Mm -hmm. I need to catch up on that one. Man, me too. I'm, I'm a, not. I'm a Deathstroke fan, but I'm so just kind of like, uh, the indie comics have been so good that, I that I'm like, I'm just going to ignore the big two. And They're I miss fine. the Deathstroke book. I know, and I'm yeah. a huge Deathstroke fan. And I, I just love Deathstroke. It's a bat signal instead of it's a spotlight. It's a bat signal instead of a spotlight. Dude, this cover is so fantastic. It's I'm dope. just saying, whether you read it or not, you should own this cover. You should put this cover in your collection. It's a great, so it. it's a great cover. But also, yeah, let's read some Deathstroke. Yeah. Because Deathstroke is such a great character. He's a great character. All right. So we've got some trades in stock. And um, 
A lot of new trades came out this week, and then I brought some Eisner nominated hey. trades. So, uh, I don't want to start there because I don't want to talk about that. Um, they are re releasing Sandman for everybody that doesn't know. They are doing new editions of Sandman. This is volume four. We have the new editions of one, two, three already. So, if you've never read Sandman or if you're a completionist, guess what? There's new volumes uh, and new editions of all of the Sandman books that are actually They're only. Paperback. They're paperback. They're also only listed as DC books. And they are listed as DC Black Label, I believe, because there is no Vertigo labeling on there at all. So if you are a completionist, you might need the ones that aren't labeled Vertigo to add to your collection. Is that, is that like a bad word to DC? Vertigo? Yeah. Like, yeah. is that something? They just want to give it, they'll title it anything else. They did the Young Animal stuff, where it's like, we just call it Well, Vertigo. we still had Vertigo at the time of Young Animals. But we, really? yeah, because uh, we still had Vertigo until 2018. Hmm. Uh, because wow. the last series that came out on it that I was reading was Hex Wives. So, DC, if you're listening, and I know you are because you're always listening, um, where is the rest of Hex Wives? Put it on DC Black Label. I don't care what the hell you call it, just put it out. I want more Hex Wives. Give me Hex Wives. Put it on whatever. Make it a prestige format that nobody buys but me. I don't care. Just give me more Hex Wives. What, what was that? Six issues? It I was, think I... it only got to five. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And yeah, they just amazing. were kind of like, oh, we're about to go out and like destroy the world, like women rule and like men drool kind of thing. And then they just were like, oh, Vertigo doesn't exist anymore. Just imagine what you think happened. Yeah. I was actually reading that as it was coming out. Such a good book. It was really good. And I just, uh, yeah, I totally, I stopped at five. That's all that they did. And and then I was, one day I was like, oh, maybe I should go back and finish collecting Hex Wives. And I was like, oh, they just never continued. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Yeah, you were, the, you were all there. And no, it's not fine. It's not fine, DC. Bring back Hex Wives. However... You did do something right in making Galaxy the Prettiest Star, which is a new graphic novel from the Young Adults line of uh, DC, which was supposed to be DC Inc., but then we didn't actually keep the imprint, whatever. Um, DC Young Adult Graphic Novels, this is great. This is actually about a uh, young alien, and they have always presented on Earth as a boy, and that is not actually who they are. As where they are from, they were actually a female. And so this is them trying to come out to all of their friends as A, an alien, but also B, a female, and not be the boy that they feel they have to present themselves as on hmm. Earth. This is a beautiful story. Um, I've read the... Um, I read the free comic book day issue, which I have more of if you want to check it out and see if you like it. It kind of gives you like a middle part. It's not the beginning in the free comic book yeah. day issue. It's kind of the middle part. But honestly, and truthfully, it's just an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful story um, with really bright colors and fantastic art. Yeah, the art is what's most appealing to me. Um, but again, I feel like DC's YA stuff is just better. DC's YA stuff is top of the mm. line. It is the best thing DC is doing, followed by the DC kid stuff. And then there's all the other comics. Yeah. So, yeah. DC, keep it up. Because uh, next up on the YA line from DC is the Zatanna YA graphic Ooh. novel coming soon oh, to fine. a Shannon near you. Oh, um, I'm super excited. I got in, I, uh, like, I, like, yelled in enthusiasm at the DC faces. And then they were like, oh, are you excited about that? I'm like, the only thing I need in my store is more Zatanna. Yeah. And they were like... Oh, like, because you like Zatanna? I was like, no, because I get asked once a day where there is a Zatanna comic. And they're like, people it. like Zatanna? Everyone loves Zatanna. Everybody loves Zatanna. And then all of the other store owners that were on this meeting with me were like, did y'all not know that? They didn't. Spoiler alert. They did not know you love Zatanna. So tweet DC right now that you love Zatanna and you want more Zatanna stuff because they don't know that you do and DC needs to hear it. They need to hear that you love Zatanna and you want all of the Zatanna stuff. So uh, you just tweet them. Just tweet them all. Tweet them, tweet them all. Tweet Jim Lee personally. I don't care. Um, Ooh, but be yeah. nice to him because I like him. He's wonderful. <laughs> um, other books coming out is Yellow Cab. This is new from IDW. This is a graphic memoir um, all about a guy who was a writer and decided he needed to experience the world. So he quit, moved to New York, and became a cab driver. 
And this is everything from how do you, like, get a cab license, like, the whole process of that. But then it's also, like, the stories of all of the people that he kind of drove around. And you get that classic, uh, like, black and white penciling. I mean, you can show them if you want. Uh, This book looks really beautiful. I actually wasn't sure if I ordered it for you specifically when it came in. Because I was like, ooh, this is a Phil kind of book. But it's, it's great. Yes. Uh, Chad said, people like anything other than Batman is the quote that you should use when you tweet them. Um, Heathen. This is the complete Heathen from Vault. Uh, they, this is a series that came out at one of the very first series from Vault. They are re-releasing it in these special editions from Vault. And now they've re, they've collected the whole thing and made a complete trade. So if you don't know, this is the story of a young Viking woman who is outcasted from her society because she realizes that she loves women and they think that that's wrong in the Viking society. So she's outcasted and she decides she's going to go and save um, a Valkyrie that Odin has put in a trap yeah. and it can only be rescued by somebody who falls in love and marries the Valkyrie. And she's like, well, I'll do it because women shouldn't be stuck by men's rules. Uh, great story. Well, it's nice, too, because it's one of the, like, early vault titles. This was, like, in their first run of titles, and it's such a great story. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, guess what's finally out in trade? Whoa, From Ahoy Comics yes. and Mark Russell. It's my bad. Oh, my uh, gosh. The most important new superhero universe, as it has claimed itself. Literally, it says, important new superhero universe on the side of the thing so that you can know that it's important. This is one of... This book was Phil and Shannon's Pick of the Week every week that it came out. So yes. just know that you're not going to go wrong with an Ahoy book from Mark Russell. Yeah, I mean, it's him doing satire on superhero books, which is what you would want from Mark Russell. I want everything from Mark Russell. I do too. He's fantastic. I do too. Um, and uh, uh, from AWA Upshot, the Knighted is finally in trade paperback form. This is the complete series of Knighted. Or at least the complete volume one. And uh, we'll see if we get more. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping so. And this is literally, this is the story that I will continuously pitch as the Santa Claus meets Batman. So good. (laughs) Because what would happen if you accidentally killed Batman and you put on the suit and now you had to be Batman? This This is that story. I can't pitch it any way better than that. That is absolutely 100% what it is. And it's wonderful. Also, a $10 trade. $10 $10 trade because AWA has all of their trades for $10. So you should, yeah. Yeah, definitely pick it up. Um, So jumping in really quick since we talked about House of Slaughter coming back, I just want to remind you that we do have trades of House of Slaughter. Um, volume one, this is the uh, story of Jason Aaron, which is not Jason Aaron, but Aaron and Jace. I guess I should say it that way so yeah. it's not as confusing sounding. Um, and it features our incredible dear friend, who we love, Chris Sheehan, on art. <gasps> Matt, do you want to get the thing so I can shout out Chris? Do you want to get the thing, the thing that Chris gave us? So yeah. I can shout out Chris. Thank you. That would be awesome. Um, so, and yes, so anyway, House of Slaughter featuring Chris's fantastic art. We'll come back to Chris in a second. Um, unless Matt gets it really, really fast. Uh, if you came and uh, if you came for free call, actually, while Matt's doing that, if you came to the Halloween Comic Fest, Halloween Comic Fest when Chris Sheehan was doing a signing and you have not gotten your Chris Sheehan slab, I would like to once again remind you that they are out. We tried to call or and or email everybody that we had contact for, but we have a lot of people who haven't picked them up yet. Um, so if you didn't get your phone call or your email or you missed it somehow, just know that your Christy Hands Lab is back. Um, and we do have them ready for you, uh, whenever. Ooh, here you come. Matt's bringing it. I'm so excited to share. So we got, Matt and I got this incredible present that you'll see hanging in the store soon from Christy Hands. So in the autumnal, the, um, child Sybil in the autumnal, um, draws a picture uh, draws a picture of what is going on in the story kind of like the 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 horror this is when we're starting to figure out a little bit about what's going on and we see Sybil's drawing of the monster in the woods essentially and what's going on well Chris actually drew that picture uh with his left hand 
he they used their left hand and like drew the picture and then sprinkled water on it and then wrinkled it all up and then scanned it and put it into the book. So this picture in the book is a scan of an actual drawing they did yeah. with their left hand. So they actually brought us the drawing. That's crazy. Um, so this is an original art piece by Sybil <laughs> or an original art piece by Chris Sheehan, however you want to look at it. But this is... <laughs> Chris, Chris Sheehan with the left hand. Chris Sheehan's left hand, <laughs> yes. Um, House of Slaughter and Autumnal do not look like this normally. Uh, this is Chris, Chris Sheehan's left hand uh, drawing as a child, and this is a piece that was used, a scan, and put into the Autumnal. And this was a gift for all of the support that we had for the Autumnal from Chris. Uh, so thank you, Chris. And uh, if I haven't said it in the last hour and a half, you should read the autumnal because it is uh, Matt and Shannon's favorite book of 2021, uh, 2020, whatever year. What pick a year? Doesn't matter if this book came out. It came out in 2020, but then uh, this trade came out in 2021. And this is a phenomenal book written uh, by Daniel Krauss, who is the uh, novelist for Guillermo del Toro's films. Oh, okay. So, like, the Shape of Water novel mm -hmm. um, and all of those. Uh, Daniel writes those novels and then did this book. This is uh, fantastic, and Chris is on art, and they are incredible, and we are so excited to have this and look for this hanging in the store uh, because we're obsessed with it. <laughs> and thank you again, Chris, um, and thank you, Carla, who they were like, hey, we have a gift for you, but we don't think you want it. And Chris was like, they want it. And Carla's like, they don't want it. And Chris is like, they do. <laughs> and, uh, it's a little creepy. It's, yeah, it's wonderful. This used to hang on Chris's uh, fridge. That's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we also have, uh, I had to brag and show that off uh, hey. because Chris is incredible. But uh, we have some of the books that were nominated for Eisner's this year. So I wanted to bring them out. This one I'm going to start with because it's actually also new this week, which this is volume two of The Good Asian. And Good Asian was nominated for Best Limited Series this year at the Eisner Awards, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. You're also going to get an incredible show from Phil and I where we just gush about the Eisner yes. nominations very, very soon. Don't you worry. Um nominated also for Best Limited Series was Stray Dogs from Image Comics, which is fantastic. This is The Secret Life of Pets meets uh, The Silence of the Lamb. Nominated for Best Ongoing Series was Department of Truth, and Volume 3 just recently came out. I don't think I even brought it on the live stream when it came out, so I wanted to bring it now. Uh, nominated for Best Limited Series was The Mini Deaths of Layla Starr. We're going to talk about, when we do our show, how Issue 3 was not nominated for Best Single Issue of a Comic. We're going to we're gonna yell about that for a while, but right now we're just going to rave about how much we love Layla Starr and tell you to read this trade. Um, nominated for two Eisner Awards, both a Best Limited Series and Best Comedy, like Best Comedic yeah. Book or whatever um, the title actually is, is Not All Robots from Mark, Mark Russell at AWA Upshot. This is a great book about... Uh, you know, we get past the point of robot of humans have become useless. Now robots are taking over and doing all of their work. And now robots are becoming obsolete as we bring in uh, mandroids yeah. who are even better. And I just, I love this book so much. And mm -hmm. I love, I was explaining it to somebody and I was like, yeah, so the robots have gotten really angry and they're kind of starting to act out. And I was, and the guy goes, oh, not all robots, like not all men. And I was like, there you go. Yeah. Now you're on the Mark <laughs> Russell page. Um also nominated for Best New Series, I believe, was uh, Radiant Black. So uh, Radiant Black is, this is Volume 2, also recently out. Um, and nominated for every single award possible is Tom Taylor's Nightwing. And this is the hardcover, which I have recently heard is not being printed still. You cannot order the hardcover right now. So what's in comic book stores is kind of all that it is. The comic book store owners were actually asking now that it was nominated for Eisner, could they get more copies of volume one as a hardcover? And uh, nobody responded yet. So I have one left. So if you need a hardcover of volume one, fight Phil for it. Cause now that I just said all of that, Phil might not let go of it. Um, but uh, Nightwing by Tom Taylor is nominated for five, five or six yeah. um, Eisner awards this year. So, um, congratulations, Tom Taylor. We're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get to comic book news. But if you need to jump in on the series, honestly, and truthfully, trades is the only way you're going to do that because those issues do not sit around for long. 
Um, so don't, don't come in and ask me if I have issue one of Tom Taylor's Nightwing. The answer is no. And I only have the one hardcover left. So get here fast because Phil's going to buy it if you don't. There's a chance it may not make it to the evening to be entirely honest. <laughs> we'll see. So we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> uh, we got some comic book news. It is a big week in comic book news. Um, yes. Chad said, and all the Jamal Campbell variants on that issue are Chad's. It's true. Jamal Campbell has been doing some incredible variants for the cover Bs for that. Um, and then all of our, like, special variants have come from people like Babs, Tar, and Jen Bartell, and yeah. just some incredible people. Um, and dude, it, they're pulling out all the stops on And this. this, it was, it's a series that I've been trade waiting, you know. And Phil loves a good hardcover. So once again, you might not get that Nightwing if you don't, don't speak now. Um... We, uh, comic book news. So, big things happened this week. First of all, uh, did you hear that Daredevil was announced as getting a yes, show? I Daredevil did. is back. We have saved it. Daredevil we has been it. saved. It is back. Congratulations. Uh, I can't wait. I don't care what they do. You could just have Charlie Cox standing in a room saying, okay. I'm they Daredevil. They announced that it's him? Though? They have not. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. They could have announced it. I didn't read the article, um, because it can't, there were so many articles coming out that I was like, oh, I just saw, I read the like smallest one that didn't right. give me any info, yeah. but there's a little back. I'm assuming we'll get Charlie. <clears throat> I assume so. It, They'd I, be silly not to. It'd be, yeah. I feel like they kind of know that that's what everybody wants. On the flip side, Amber Heard is out. Aquaman contract, no. Really? She, she apparently she has confirmed that. I did not watch the trial, but apparently Amber Heard has said that uh, Aquaman dropped her. So, you know. So are they gonna re? I mean, I guess they have to start reshooting. I mean, the movie. she was already in a very small percentage of it, so they might just not. Oh, the they one? could, yeah. So they oh. might just film those. Like it was like six scenes, so they might just refilm those scenes. I know a lot of people have been like, let's just bring in Amelia Clark because we know her and Jason Momoa work well together. But I'd be curious to see if you could fan cast Mira uh, to not be, like, to be a new person, who Amelia would you do? Amelia Clark would be my choice. It would not be, my, Amelia Clark would not be my choice. I love her, but you know what I want from Amelia Clark? More comic books. Write me yeah. more comic books, Amelia Clark. You don't even yeah. need to act anymore. You're a great actress, but you know what? You're also a great comic book writer. So write me some more comics, Amelia. I'm here for that. Mom was fantastic. Um, and they're finally, like, calling her comic book writer Amelia Clark at That's CGC. Awesome. So That's I'm fantastic. very excited. Um, other things, uh, a calculated man, which is on tomorrow's FOC. So here's your warning. If you would like me to order a calculated man for you, here's your warning. A calculated man is the new Aftershock title from Paul Tobin, and it is already optioned for Hulu. And it oh has not even God. come out. So it is on final order cutoff tomorrow. If you need a copy, this is it. You got until this show ends to let me know that you need a copy. If you're watching this on YouTube, sorry, it is way too late. Um, but if you are watching it live on Facebook right now, you can still ask me for a copy. You know it's a Paul Tobin Aftershock book. You know we're going to order it. We love Paul Tobin. Um, but it is it is already optioned. So, um We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. It sounds like a good book. I just, it does. I just, I have concerns when they do stuff like this because it's going to be one of those issues where more than likely one will be gone very quickly and then not many people will care about it and it'll kind of just fizzle out. I felt like that was the case with Undiscovered Country. Mm-hmm. If you are interested in it and you don't tell me before tomorrow to order you a special copy because you are wanting it just for that reason, but you do want to read it, let me know. Um, either way, you have three weeks before the book actually comes in. Um, and honestly, I, I would love to give it to people who are looking to read the series. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read it. I'm excited. I will read anything Paul Tobin writes. Um, and I'm super looking forward to that. Um, Opus, who just did the Frank Fazetta uh, mm -hmm. a Death Dealer book just announced that their next book is called Echoes from the Void and it is done with Evanescence. <laughs> thought you would like that. Evanescence. Do you want a comic book? No uh, way. Yeah, so I, I thought it was going to be Z2. I had to read it like four times to make sure it said it yeah, was Opus. But it was, it was an Opus comic. It's with Evanescence. It's, from, it's called Echoes from the Void. Um, I have no idea what that means. Really interested to see. I just saw that 
Z2 has an Angels and Airwaves kind yeah, of graphic novel. Like, they yeah. have, like, a graphic novel from all... They're of definitely going... been around for 10 mm-hmm. years. Angels and Airwaves... I know, but the graphic years. novel from Z2... Yeah, yes, but no one likes years. Angels and Airwaves is the problem. No, look, I saw Angels and Airwaves live twice. And the time I saw Angels and Airwaves, uh, for those who don't know, is Tom DeLonge's side project outside of uh, uh, Blink-182... And no one liked it when it was out. And when I saw him at Warped Tour, people were throwing stuff at him the entire time that he was performing. Um, But also, that dude is now like he runs his own alien organization where Mm -hmm. it's like uncovering the truth about aliens. So, you know, good for you, Tom Tom. It's just weird that they would choose, like, there's so many bands that I would be down to see graphic novels from but angels and airways <laughs> not on that list again i think they're re-releases because they've been out for 10 years and they made two animes and the animes came out in 2015 oh i or do is remember it the anime came out from no the have novels. you looked at the z2 one to see if it's the same one because no, it could be a cool. different one. it could be a new one because it's been be an ongoing one. series but about z2 has character. like a backlog for forever of, of and, comics so. and the com the graphic novels are written about the character that the albums are written about because all right. the albums are concept albums. which i think is cool yeah i love that i think that's great that there's a comic book company that is publishing those stories chad said laugh all you want about evanescence but he is claiming so i got you chad here's the thing chad i'm going to read it and i'm hoping that somewhere around the time that first issue comes out we do get a new evanescence album because i have been waiting for one and phil is going to be first in line to have amy lee sign his comic when it comes out so don't you you, when chad will be right there with you You, y'all can stand in line together she can even announce that she's only going to appear at one convention and it's not in the state of texas and i will be on an airplane to wherever that is (laughs) and be like hey i have these two cds i need you to sign and this comic and this comic yeah Uh, that's a they were always a guilty pleasure for me oh um, I don't believe in the term very, guilty pleasure. I think guilty. you should just I, like what yeah, you like. I don't feel, feel guilty. guilty about it. I liked Evanescence. I have no problem admitting well, that. Okay, but the difference is, is like, if I'm driving around and I have ABBA blaring, I'm not going to pull up next to a car of people and roll up my window and be like, ugh. But if I'm listening to Evanescence, more than likely I'm going to be like, oh, no, no. No, I'm not listening to that. It's something else. No, no, no. I was playing. It's the radio. It's myself. the radio. Yeah. I'm showing my friend how bad they are, you know, like something like that. But. Admit it. You love it. It's fine. You're a Taylor Swift fan. You can't. You can't. Yeah, and it's two different categories. I don't though. know. I I don't know that it's all that different when it comes to. Is Evanescence a Grammy award winning artist? <laughs> they are not. Uh, or a doctor. Because Taylor Swift got an honorary doctorate this weekend. Yes, so. that's right. And that speech proves to me that you did not actually earn that doctorate. <laughs> Poor Taylor. <laughs> did not earn that doctorate. <laughs> Talking about eating grass and whatnot. What did she say? She's like, breathe in and breathe out and move forward. And I know how breathing works because I'm a doctor now. And I was like, oh, Taylor. Just- I feel like she someone was like, we're going to give you this doctorate. And she's like, someone write me a really bad like speech here because I need people to know that I'm not like, I'm not actually a doctor I don't, <laughs> I'm not Taylor Swift PhD right you know but I want to see that on her next album Taylor Swift Taylor PhD. Swift PhD and then a whole album about being a doctor yeah you know it could be um the other news is the CBCS president slash founder is leaving the guy who founded CBCS is leaving Wow. So um, that was huge news this week for, you know, all the slabbing and everything is that like CBCS, this founder is leaving. Who knows what that means for CBCS? Who's going to come up and take the place? Um, We don't know. And he is going to my comic shop. So I don't know what that means for my comic shop. If my comic shop is going to be getting into greeting in some capacity, if my comic shop is just, I, he he specifically said in his statement that he is more than just integrating and he wants to work with comics more in other capacities. So I'm assuming that that means that he's trying to say my comic shop will not start doing grading uh, by saying that. But who knows? That's, who knows where that could lead? I mean, I don't feel like my comic shop really needs to venture out anymore I don't think they than do either. where they are. I think they've solidified themselves as, you know, reputable in the comic book industry, so... I could see them becoming a bigger competitor for Go Collect with him on board. 
which cool is is, is what if I if you brought somebody who's been doing grading over, I could see you kind of right. trying to like build out that kind of thing. But I'm curious to see. That said, on the slabbing news side, uh, CGC announced their new uh, labels for all their, you know, they have the fan labels with, like, all the different Marvel ones. They announced their new Marvel labels. Um, and so a lot of them were retired, and we've got new ones. we got a Moon Knight label now. Of course. Um, what else did we get, Matt? we got some cool ones, and I'm going to mess it up if I try to do Moon Knight, one. Daredevil, Ms. Marvel, uh, and the Moon Knight's a David Finch. Ms. Marvel... The Fantastic Four one's staying. The Miles Morales one is staying. There's a new Ghost Rider. Uh, there's doing a, secret... a Ghost Rider label? Yeah, yeah, there's a Ghost Rider label, and it's the new art from the new book. Mm. There is uh, a Secret Wars 8 Spider-Man Jazz Hands, and <laughs> there is a Jim Lee Magneto X-Men label, Ooh. and there is a uh, Venom Lethal Protector label. Nice. Where's my Squirrel Girl label? You know, why don't you send him a letter? Where's my Spider Woman label? That, okay, Spider Woman first, uh, and then Squirrel Girl. Oh, and a Spider Gwen label that is gorgeous. Right. There's a gorgeous Spider Gwen label. But it's not on my Spider Gwen book because they just made it, so I'm sad. Um, Are you going to resend it in? No. No, I'm not going to touch my knife. The labels cover up the first appearance information. The first appearance information goes on the back. So I recommend it on books that are not keys. There you go. If y'all didn't hear that, Matt said the label covers the first appearance information. So don't put it on your key books. Put it on the books that don't have a key. So there's nothing that goes in that spot. And in that way, uh, Guillermo wants to know if there's a Thanos label. No, no there's no, not. there's not a Thanos label. You can't see it because of the reflection. Really yeah. Well, yeah, we those tried. Tough. Those are nice. They, we Matt, we did tweet it. Yeah. I think Matt might post it on Twitter. I did. Oh, and there's a Doctor Doom. Is that yeah. Doctor Doom? And there's a Doctor Doom. Yeah, the Doctor that's Doom nice. ones. That's pretty dope. Ooh. I've already had a lot of air, uh, orders for the Daredevil later. Yeah. I oh, really? That. Yeah. Well, if they all came from one customer, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's we, one we, customer. We have a customer Three who customers. has almost oh, a complete Daredevil run oh, wow. from the beginning, so that's why I'm like, if it came from one person, it's not the same. Uh, Chad wants you to know that Evanescence is a Grammy Award-winning band. Um, just for the record. So you can blast it with no guilt. Um, I'm so going to feel guilty. <laughs> so I'm going to flip over really fast. So if I miss your comments, I'm sorry. But I'm going to flip over to the fact that we have our Eisner nominations. And if you saw my video yesterday, Phil and I are going to do a whole show about the Eisners. But we haven't had a chance to talk about when that's going to be. But uh, we like to do it and talk about who was nominated, why we like those books, who we're going to pick for our choice. Which we do get to vote. So we're really actually telling you who our votes are. Uh, and then... Um, um, we also like to talk about who wasn't nominated, like the fact that Taylor Esposito is still not nominated for Best Letterer, and I don't know why. Really? Um, really? Really? I know. Yeah. I don't understand that one. That is one that does not compute in my brain. Um, D. D. Knuff is still not nominated for Best Colorist. I'm gonna. I'm gonna continue to rant about that for years to come. I'm sure. Um, until somebody have they ever? No, D's never been. D told me that. Uh, D actually said that he doesn't think he's earned his stripes yet to be nominated, and I disagree. With D. <laughs> what? That is you. You hey, take that negativity elsewhere because. But at the same time, if you feel like you haven't earned it, which leads me to believe that you haven't put out your best work right? yet. Right. I can't wait to see it. Cool. That's uh, I'm stoked about that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Wow. Um. But just to really quickly run through some of the nominations, uh, in some of the big things. Uh, of course, best single issue or one shot, Marvel Voices Identity, Mouse Guard, which woohoo, sadness, nice. Nightwing, uh, one of the, issue 87 was nominated, uh, Wonder Woman Historia, the Amazons, I'm just gonna tell you that's gonna be my vote, uh, cause that's that <laughs> issue one that <laughs> Phil Jimenez, yeah, uh, ridiculous, like Phil Jimenez just flexing all over comic books in that issue. Uh, best Continue Series, Bitter Root, Department of Truth, Immortal Hulk, Nightwing, Something is Killing the Children. I am going to think about that for a long time. Uh, best, you, we know. We know the answer, though. Uh, best Limited Series, Beta Ray Bill, Good Asian, Hocus Pocus, not to be confused with the Disney movie, Mini Deaths of Layla Star, Stray, Stray Dogs, and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Congratulations, uh, Tom King. Best new series, Human Target, also Tom King. Nice House on the Lake, Not All Robots, Radiant Black, and Ultra Mega. Um, Ooh, Ultra, Ultra Mega. Mega. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to skip down because we'll do all of them in a long, in a, a, eventually, but I would like to point out that Wind and Strange Academy were nominated for Best Books for Teens. 
Nice. Uh, not All Robots nominated for Best Humor Publications. Uh, Superman Red and Blue was nominated for Best Anthology, which I'm really excited about because there was some really beautiful moving stories in that. Um, and Silver Coin was also nominated in that category. I'm skipping. We'll talk about all of this in the other stuff later on. I uh, want to get to the thing that I was looking for, which is best writer and those, because I just want to give a shout out to those. Uh, best writer, Ed Brubaker for the Reckless series or just existing. Um, Kelly Sue DeConnick for Wonder Woman Historia. Absolutely. Uh, Felipe Mello for Ballad of Sophie. Ram V, which Chad, congratulations. You've been waiting for this moment. Ram V yeah. nominated for best, new, best writer. Uh, and James Tynion, obviously. Uh, also nominated Best Writer Artist, Alison Bechtel, uh, Junji Ito, uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, Will McPhail, Barry Windsor Smith. Good luck choosing a winner in that category, Phil. Barry Windsor. Uh, best Penciler Inker or Penciler Inker Team, uh, Felipe Andre for Mini Desa, Andrade for Be- nice. Min- Mini Desa the Little Star, Phil Jimenez for Wonder Woman Historia, uh, Bruno Redondo for Nightwing, Isad Rabik for Eternals, and P. Craig Russell for Norse Mythology. Um, I'm going to Get down to oh best cover artist Jen Bartel is nominated. David Matt, nice. Bruno Redondo, Alex Ross, uh, Tedesco and Yoshi Ushitano. Uh, best coloring Felipe Andrade for Lynn Deaths, Terry Dodson on Adventure Man, which has great colors and nobody talks yeah. about. Uh, those sepia tones are really cool. Keo Neal for T Dragon, uh, Jacob Phillips who was just hey. in the store for uh, all the Reckless series, and Matt Wilson. For a lot of books like Undiscovered Country and Eternals, but most importantly to me, Jonna and the Impossible yeah, Monsters. There you go. Uh, best lettering: Wes Abbott, Clayton Cowles, uh, Crank, who does the lettering on Jonna and the Impossible Monsters, Ed Dukeshire, and Barry Windsor Smith. And we're going to talk about all the other ones in our specific Eisner nomination show because otherwise, Phil and I will talk about it all night, and nobody needs to. We don't need. That's a yeah. whole. It's a whole nother show. Yeah. We will keep you here all night. Another three hours. Another three hour show where Phil and I explain to you why we think those people should win. Uh, yes. Chad said Ram is up against some heavy hitters, but fingers crossed that his prophecy will come true. Layla Star was, I mean, it literally says Layla Star was Entertainment Weekly and Variety's pick of best book for 2021. So Yeah, but I, I also don't think this is going to be the only time he gets a nomination. I feel like this, this is, is going to be reoccurring for sure. This is like sure. cl- the climb. Like, yeah. he's... We have not, if we have not hit the peak of Ram B. Like, we are still, like, we're on that, like, when you're doing a big climb and you hit a part where you look out and you're like, wow, the world is beautiful and vast and I can't believe I've made it this high. And then you realize you still have, like, yeah. another yeah. major yeah. peak. Like, yeah. we have not made it to the major peak for Ram B. We are just, we are just scratching right. the surface. Ram's going to have some incredible stuff to come, I know. Um Speaking of incredible things to come, we have our new releases. Uh, we've got Bloodstained Teeth, Issue 2. Department of Truth, 18 is coming out this week. Hell Cop, Issue 7. Ooh. Loving the second arc of Hell, uh, Hell Cop. Uh, Ice Cream Man, Issue 30. New Burn, Number 7, which we are about to take a break Sweet. on New Burn. So, uh, Rogue Sun, Number 4. Stillwater, 13. Chip, you have been dragon waiting like paper shortages chip zadarsky i don't know what it is but i'm glad we're actually seeing issue 13 of still water coming out uh unnatural returns with a new series called unnatural blue bud for murka and doffel fans godzilla versus mighty Morphin power rangers number three new my my little pony series launches this Ooh. week a new number one for that Team T one twenty nine, Amazing Spider Man number two, Captain Carter number three is out this week, uh, and that it will be the only issue of Captain Carter I have in stock. So make sure you are subscribed to Captain Carter if you want to get that, uh, because that is another thing we didn't mention in comic book news is that Marvel announced that they want to do a live action Captain Carter show. Ooh, okay. So, uh, Devil's Reign Omega. I've had so many people ask me when that was happening. It is happening this week. Hulk issue 7, Legion of X launches this week, Moon Knight number 11, Punisher number 3, Something is Killing the Children issue 23 is out, uh, Buzzard and Bone issue 2 from Source Point, the trade paperback for Eat the Rich is dropping this week, Sweet. very excited. Fox and Hare from Vault is finally yes. set to come out. We have been waiting for this one for a long time. That's probably a pick of the week. It's probably going to be a pick Just of the week. Say. Uh, yeah. Um, Good Boy Volume 2 is launching this week with issue 1 of Volume 2. Land of the Living Gods, issue 4. Last book you'll ever read, issue 8, which I 
think might be the last one, but I say that every we'll time. We'll never know. Uh, Lead City, issue three is out. Naughty List number two. Two books I'm very excited about. Lead City and Naughty List coming back Wait, this week. Wait, we, we, we already got Lead City two? Yeah, yeah, we have Lead City. Oh, was that the, that was the episode that Matt was on? You weren't yes. on that issue. That was when that you was, were out of oh, town. Matt, it was Matt's right. pick of the week, the week was he was on. That Love week. that book. And yes. they're, they're sold out at... Uh, diamond of issue one. Ooh. We're out of issue. Oh one. no! Do y'all have issue two though? We do oh, have issue okay, two. Cool. Oh. It's so good. Right, you're gonna have to read that now. That first issue was great. I yeah. love that book. Yeah. That book was so good. Uh, Naughty List issue two. Rise of Dracula is coming to an end in issue six, which is out this week. Okay. Shadow Service issue twelve. This is back. This is issue two of the new art. Spectra one shock. This is the new aftershock one shot. It looks like it's. An homage to Phantoma. Like, she's got a blue skull-like mask okay. and a skull hand, but it's in, like, a Technicolor. Shock. This is the new um, A Technicolor uh, style thing. So it looks kind of like Terrors in Technicolor meets Phantoma. I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. Spectra, one shock. Probably going to be, like, the large prestige format. I can't help it if it is. Uh, Batman Beyond, White Knight number three. DC versus Vampire Hunters issue one starts this week. Uh, and speaking of the Eisner nominated Ram V Swamp Thing number 13 is out this week as oh, is okay. Robin number 14. So oh. it is a great week for comics again coming up this week. I'm very excited. So, I don't know if I've told you this, but this is a great time to be a comic book fan. It is. It's wonderful. In all facets too. Like it's big two, independent, mm-hmm. everything. And it's all leaking over in TV shows and the movies. It's just what a time. I know. We had a customer today that was like, oh, I heard y'all, like, he, Matt was checking out. He's like, oh, you're getting carriers. He's like, well, when I walked in, I heard somebody, like, ranting about how good this series was. I was like, that is me. <laughs> I love carriers. But it's a great time to be alive as a comic book fan because we have books about militant pigeons protecting the city of New York. Like, you can literally make a comic book about anything, and I love that. Um, lastly in comic book news is today we had a workshop. Okay. Um, we had another Girl Scout troop out. I'm very excited to be like the home of Girl Scouts getting this comic creation badge. That is a badge Girl Scouts yeah. can get. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you may not know Bat City Comic Professionals is a 501c3 nonprofit um, public charity. And so all of the proceeds that we get here at Bat City that don't go to keeping the store open go towards actually doing a lot of really cool um, programs for literacy and writing and imagination development in kids. And one of the things that we do is we do comic creation workshops where we teach kids all about the elements of writing through the creation of comic books. And we bring in different artists. And now that we are, you know, this home, we've partnered with the Girl Scouts of Texas as like a home for them to get their new comic creation badge. Um, I reached out this week to Monica Gallagher, who was one of our creators who's local, who came for, um, free comic book day and she was like oh my gosh i would love to inspire more girls to make comic books like she's been in it for years she actually showed up with her oni press bag because (laughs) most of her books have come out from oni press and so she had like an oni press tote bag and i was like oh i'm so excited already and so monica came and she taught the girls all of this art and it was so cool because she did not only did she do the figure drawings pieces that we always do but While I'm explaining, like, okay, now you're going to tell your story through panels, Monica draw like, draws an entire, like, she drew an entire comic book, like, a a six-page, or six-panel comic while I'm talking. Um, And she's sketching it out while I'm explaining how you panel and how you lead, like, thoughts from one panel to the next. She's drawing this on an iPad for the kids to watch along as I'm explaining it. She's drawing it. And then she finishes it. And then she's like, okay, now, like, Shannon mentioned speech bubbles. You know, this is, we're going to put our speech bubbles here. This is what a narration bubble looks like. You kind of start it right here, and you show, like, this narration box. This is what we do for thought bubbles. And and just drew this entire comic, like, that showcased it, like, while they're talking. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, can you show them how you do the perspective lines to show like where people are looking. So if I want to draw somebody looking to the left, like how would I do the the perspective lines to kind of show that in the beginning? And so she did an entire grid of every direction you could look, including like kind of looking at an angle. 
and she drew, it was like six or seven different faces, and she put the eight arrows, like, in which directions they were looking, and then drew the face to match the arrow. And so it was really, really cool to see her do this and, like, just do it so quickly and and showcase it and then talk about a lot of her books. And I, I did have, and I... I got to reach out to her because she she left like she had to leave like right after we were finished and and a lot of the girls came in and were like how can I buy Monica's book she's so cool yeah and um so it was great to get to to do that and thank you Monica for that and if you haven't um check out Monica Gallagher on uh, the internet you can find all of her stuff I should have put up her website we've got uh, she gave me a couple of her books to check out but we are definitely going to be ordering some either from her directly uh, she has a book right now that is called Assassin Roommate which is super cool. Um, and she's got one that's called Bonnie and Collide, which is a roller derby book, which I, oh, that's nice. the one she didn't give me. So I'm like, I got to get that one. Yeah. That one's going to be great. Um, so um, thanks again, Monica, for helping out the, the girls. You inspired a whole group of girls, um, to want to create art. And thank you to the Girl Scouts of Texas, um, and the specific troop that was here today for coming out and, and hanging out with us. It was a lot of fun to make some books and, we got some really cool stories. Like one girl was like, this is how I would rewrite this Supergirl episode that I watched. And she was like, it's all about Supergirl. And her only sidekick that I'm putting on there is Wynn because the rest of them are kind of okay. But like Wynn is the best sidekick. And I was like, as a Jeremy Jordan fan, 100% on your side. Um, however, we just got the first appearance of Maggie Sawyer in comics uh, in the shop the other day. Wow. And I was super excited about that because I love Maggie. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, super, super happy to, to have those Girl Scouts out. And, and one of our Girl Scouts actually shared, like, a personal story, wrote their whole comic about, like, the emotions that they've been dealing with recently, and then got up and explained those emotions, like, to the group and explained for the first time, like, how she's been feeling recently, and then shared her story. And these were Girl Scouts that were, like, under the age of 10. And this wow. girl got up and shared her entire story of, like, her personal emotions and then shared how she, was like, drew her comic, like, showed her story. And, like, the actual comic went panel by panel and explained the story to everybody. And, like, I, it's, it was so hard to make it out without crying, like, as an adult, like, yeah. watching this kid do this. But I can't, the, the courage and the strength that these, the, that that took for that student to, like, share that today was incredible and the fact that we can see that you know no matter what your age is you can understand that comics and art in general and storytelling are all ways to kind of deal with your own emotions and kind of explore that and to share it with other people and the fact that you know we saw a kid today who was able to not only understand that but then use it and feel it and like get through those emotions like in that moment, which is absolutely beautiful. And uh, thank you for sharing. You know who you are. I'm not going to call you out on here because I don't want to do that. Because uh, I know you're going to, you you will probably see this. And I don't want to call you out because you didn't ask to be called out. So, uh, but thank you for sharing. Um, other than that, that is all we've got going on. We will see you this Wednesday for New Comic Book Day. Um, we will also see you soon for Phil and Shannon talk about the Eisners for yes. God Awful Too Long that you'll <laughs> love, absolutely. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, thanks for tuning in live. If you are watching this on YouTube later in the week, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, for uh, You can be updated with all the other new content that will be coming your way soon if you push those buttons, so make sure you do that. Um, if we don't see you in shop this week, we'll see you back here Sunday at 9 p.m. or whenever you're watching this. Uh, thanks so much. Enjoy comics. Read some good books this week. We'll see you soon. Bye.